as the large Texas flag is just being taken off the field. The two schools have played their school songs, and you see the series record. As you look at uh, Jacobs warming up on the sideline, and yesterday Jack Party said we're going to go the way we have been all year, and that is I'm not going to name a starting quarterback until game time. So whether it's going to be number 13, who will trot there out on the field, David Dacus, the senior out of Kingsville, or Andre Ware, we're not sure just yet. But one of the things that we have seen is the change has been made to Ware the last few weeks very quickly. As soon as Dacus doesn't show that he's red hot, they go right to that man, Andre Ware. There's Andre. Here are the rankings, both in the Southwest Conference and also in the nation. You see, number one in all three of those categories, eight, two, and six nationally. So it tells you exactly how, how powered this uh, Houston Cougar offense has been this year. Dixon is the deepest man as Clements is going to have to have somebody to put a finger on the football. The wind is blowing that strong behind him. There is James Dixon. to the near sideline, out of bounds is Paul Smith. Watched it run by, five yards will be stepped off. And we'll go back, line up and do this one more time, this time for the 30-yard line. Now you would think he would get a good kick because he's got the wind at his back in this first quarter. Houston will be throwing into the wind. I'm sure that Texas wants to get off and soar quickly, but you don't want to give the football to James Dixon back there. He's got a 26-yard average on kickoff returns, and that is a good average. Well, we talked about the explosive attacks, particularly of Houston and also of the University of Texas. And as far as the lethal weapons department, those numbers right there speak for themselves, Dave. Oh, boy, I tell you, Weatherspoon has been probably the surprise. Everybody expected Metcalf to do as well as he is doing. But really, Weatherspoon, they keep on saying, is he that good? Can he really throw for a, an eight-yard, nine-yard average? That ball is going to go out of bounds again, and Clemens is uh, off to a very slow start this afternoon. Now they're going to move the ball back to the 25-yard line. And as Dave said, we have discussed the fact that the wind is very strong today, but you would think that kicking with the wind, that he would get off and running. Hasn't been the case so far. Wendell Sheldon is the referee today. Bill Voss, Buddy Coleman, Bobby Brooks, Tommy Moore, Bo Hicks, and Ron Murphy. The remainder of the officials in the ballgame today. Wendell, of course, a veteran of the Southwest Conference Wars. I think one of the best ones in the country. There he is. Good look at him. Well, he's a take-charge official. When he's out there, nobody talks back to him out there. I guarantee he takes charge. He'll say to those boys, son, I knew your father. <laughs> Okay, if you just joined us, uh, it is not that anyone has scored. It is the fact that the first two kicks have gone out of bounds. So we have had a prolonged beginning to this one here. Parents Day on the Texas campus. And this one is not even in over in. And it's going to go over Dixon's head and out the back of the end zone. And Wayne right now, I'm sure, is saying he has a very good sense of humor. And that's what I plan on all the time. <laughs> so Houston will take it over at their own 20-yard line. You see, Andre Ware is talking it over with John Jenkins, the offensive coordinator, so he will be the starter at quarterback this afternoon. Andre Ware, the people who will join him. Ware, Anders, Phillips, Dixon, Brian Williams, and Kevin Mason. Those are the wide receivers. The lone setback, of course, is Anders. And there you see the guys who are up front. William Gant, the big center, 300 pounds plus. And the first play from scrimmage as Texas brings seven men to the line of scrimmage. Backside blitz, pass is thrown incomplete. Into the flat by Jason Phillips, the intended receiver. And now let's set the defense for the Texas Longhorns. And I have a feeling, Dave, this is going to change rapidly this afternoon. You see the down four. Patton, the freshman, Bolden, who played, was a first-time starter last week and had 14 tackles. Brockman, Hager, and Duncan are the linebackers. And in the secondary, we show you one more time. We talked about the two sophomore and the two freshmen. Garza, Behrman, Richard, and Barry. Jason Phillips as they got 
single coverage, and Garza had to make the, the tackle that could have saved the touchdown. Well, one of the things is we look at the Miller Light must, what Houston must do is run its offense, its offense with confidence. That's something that they have not done well. They do it well in the second half. They've got to eliminate turnovers. They have turned over too many times, fumbles, interceptions, and on defense, they have to disrupt the normal quarterback timing of the Texas uh, quarterback, but they are, they are a good football team. So it's a first and 10 after a gain of 28 yards in the pass play to Phillips, the nation's leader. Ware rolls that pocket back over across the middle, incomplete. Hit immediately by Mark Berry as the pass was thrown. It'll go incomplete as Dixon couldn't hold on. It'll be a second down and 10. And, and one of the things is that as we look at James Dixon coming out of the backfield on his little crossing pattern, the ball's a little bit high. But one of the things that Texas has elected to do is go to a man-to-man -man coverage. You see one man in the picture. He's playing Dixon all by himself. They have about seven or eight men up on the line of scrimmage. They are going to come after Andre Ware in the Houston offense. They say, hey, we can't sit back and just wait for them to complete those little passes underneath. Second down and 10, line of scrimmage, the Cougar 48. the ball. You could see Garza closing into the picture, but he wasn't close enough to do damage as far as making the reception. And now it's going to be a third down and ten, and you have to be impressed in the early going with the protection by the Cougar offensive front. Yes, the only reason they haven't moved the football, Ron, is, and Andre Ware knows this, is because they've had a little case of dropsy. They've dropped three balls in the early part of this game that they should have caught. That's when I talk about how they have to run their offense with confidence. They run in the second half. They are an awesome offense. They're much better in the second half. They need to get that confidence Early. Keep an eye on Weatherspoon with a third down at 10. They like a draw from this situation also, Dave. Phillips drops the ball at the 49-yard line, and you see the youngster grabbing his headgear, and Dave Rowe, you hit it on the head. It's confidence, Ron. You have got to play. You see, it's all man-to-man -man coverage. See, everybody has a man. Turn and they try to pick underneath. Now watch how open Phillips is right there. The ball just goes right between his hands. You have got to make that catch. You just cannot allow that ball to be missed. Simon Rodriguez averaging almost 41 yards a kick with the first punt of the afternoon. Metcalf is the deep man for the Longhorns. End over end, into that win is tough. Metcalf fumbles the ball and it looks still scrambling for it. Houston has recovered. gets a giant reprieve. They really do. Metcalf was trying not to let this ball bounce. And the ball was low on him. He just never found the handle on the football. But he was trying not to let it bounce inside the 10 or 15 yard line. He tried to make a good play. Look how far he had to run. And it was way down low. But on that position, you have got to concentrate on football and just cover it. Even if you have to let it drop. This high sky today could be a problem for both receivers and return people. First to 10 in the line of scrimmage is the Texas 21. something else to you as we take a look at the replay. Dave, with all the incompleted passes, a punt, three kickoffs, we still haven't played a minute of the ball game <laughs> That's because exactly of the stoppage of the clock. We still have 14.07 to play in this opening period. Gosh, you, you bring a sack, uh, a sack lunch for later this <laughs> afternoon. Well, we expect a lot of offense. You, you mentioned it in the opening, they scored 100 points between these two, and there's no doubt that Houston can certainly score the 60 that they did last year if they get on a roll. Second down and 10. Over the middle, has it complete. Inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line is Mason. And now, David McWilliams on the sideline pointing up that the 25-second clock he thought had run out. Obviously, the ball was snapped just prior to it going to double zero. That play did take a long time because Ware made an adjustment on the line of scrimmage, and it looked as if it was snapped. If it wasn't snapped on one, it was in between one and zero. 
So it's a first and ten for the Cougars as Mason, the junior out of Houston, Texas, makes the reception of the ball just outside the ten. Cougars are on the scoreboard. Brown, a nice move by Jason Phillips to get free from Mark Burry on the line. He just made a real juke, and all of a sudden he was wide open in the end zone, corner of the end zone. And again, a very well-thrown football thrown right on target because Burry wasn't that far away from knocking it down. Roman Anderson to attempt the extra point. Only missed one this year. kick up and let's take another look at it you will see on the on the right of your screen you'll see Dixon make that move in the end zone now watch the way the ball is thrown over top of the defender he almost gets there with a hand just a very well thrown football so Phillips with the touchdown and with 13 minutes 35 seconds left to play in this opening period the Cougars are already on the scoreboard here's Phillips on the far sideline his team the ball up seven to nothing the Houston Cougars on top you see him talking with the, his quarterback Andre Ware on exactly what the Texas secondary is doing or what they're not doing possibly as Dave what did we count up how many players are the Cougars run already well there have been nine plays in the first minute and 25 seconds one punt that shows you how quickly their offense goes of course a three play drive 21 yards run it was really set up by that miss uh, handling of that punt by Terry Met I mean not Terry Metcalf Eric Metcalf. I keep on thinking of Terry Metcalf because I played against him in the pros. <laughs> Adams with the ball teed at the 35-yard line. And because of the wind, the two deep receivers for Texas have moved up to the 10-yard line. This is going to come to Samuels at the 13. 25, and he comes out to the 26-yard line. So this is the way the Longhorns will scrimmage. On offense, the redshirt freshman out of Round Rock, Westwood. It will be Mark Murdoch, opening at quarterback last week. His first start ever, and it was the second best performance ever by a Texas quarterback. Pretty good credentials. The rest of the offense, Metcalf and Norris will be the setbacks, and you see Walker and Tony Jones, the tight end, is Stephen Clark. And up front, Cephas, Miller, Champagne, Soleil, and Thomas. Metcalf in the backfield, Jenkins steps up to knock him down at the 25-yard line. And let's take a look at the defense as you see Jenkins up and down, the senior out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Alfred Oglesby, his ball game a couple of weeks ago against Arkansas, truly outstanding as he had over 20 tackles in that ball game. Lathan Burnett is in the middle because of the injury to McDade. And in the secondary, Callaway gets the start at that right cornerback spot and Ellison in the place of Johnny Norwood. the 30 to the 32 as Lathan got taken out of the play but Callaway from that quarterback spot it's going to be a gain of seven and for the Longhorns they need three the middle light must for Texas well they have to pressure the quarterback they have got to get pressure on the quarterback on defense they have to sustain drives and that's keep away keep the ball away from Houston and of course use Met uh, Eric Metcalf even more than what they already do Keep this drive alive. The Longhorns need the 36-yard line. Murdoch is going to be sacked. It's Jenkins again. Loss of 14 on the play. And, Ron, really, this ball should be thrown. He's got a lot of time back there. He never really sets up, but he is not a mobile quarterback. He takes the sack almost always. He's not a running quarterback. He's more of a setback, dropback passer type of quarterback. Lil Jadal's punt, driving spiral. Anders way back to the 21-yard line. Stopped at the 34. 
62, is that 62 or 67 now? 62 yards on the punt. Mark Simmelman downfield on special teams for the Longhorns to make the stop so that Cougar offense already leading 7 to nothing gets a chance to come right back onto the field as the Longhorns 1-2-3 in punt. Apple roundup. Notre Dame leading big of a rice. That was the second period. That's the only score we have right now. to the bottom of your screen. Pitch it back. That is Dixon on the reverse at the 40. Spins off the tackle, and then Hager comes over to help out and knock him out of bounds as Beerman also. And there was a marker down at the 45-yard line. Texas Longhorns and this penalty will take it across midfield inside the 45. So the Longhorns right now down 7 to nothing. A fumble which gave Houston the ball back at the 21 and now a personal foul call. And that's not what you want to do to a Houston team to keep them and give them field position on you. David McWilliams certainly knows that you you want you don't want to stifle the aggressiveness of your defense but you want to make smart heads up plays. So the Cougars across midfield again. Weatherspoon, first time for him this afternoon. At right guard, down around the 41-yard line. It's going to be a gain of a couple. Number 28, Chuck Weatherspoon. Boy, he is close to breaking it on that play. When they send him up through there, and they've got Hager down on the line of scrimmage, they can really get in trouble quick with Weatherspoon busting through. And now the Cougars with their no-huddle offense. As you see Ware walking from side to side, talking to his wide receivers. That's Dixon who is resetting. 7-0. Cougars lead. We're about to go under 11 to play in this opening period. Drills it in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Kevin Mason. Hit him on the shoulder pad at the 22 as he had curled in front of the coverage. Boy, Ron, you cannot throw the ball any better than this. Watch this strike that Mason just drops. And there's no other way to say it than just drops. He curls in. Look where the ball hits him. Right between his numbers, 8 and 6. Right on the dot. Ware is awfully sharp. Now, the thing is whether he gets a little bit upset by the drops. You can see he's only 3 of 9. He's had, I believe, 5 drop passes in his first period. Cody Smith comes into the lineup. It's third down for the Cougars. They need the Texas 34. Option play. Where? Pitches the ball back. Weatherspoon. And he's going to have the first down unless Wendell Sheldon says his knee was down. Play is over at the 42-yard line. And Ron, if that's not, if he's not down, I thought that was a forward lateral on that play. Where's knee was not down, then it would have been a forward lateral. Bobby Duncan is the man who comes across. That's where they whistled the play dead as the officials say, nope, the knee was down. So a punting situation. Simon Rodriguez didn't kick at a great distance last time. It was only 31, but he came up with good results as Texas fumbled. to the end zone, so let's take a break. Ten minutes, ten seconds left to play in this opening period. 42-yard kick by Rodriguez. Cougars leading. We'll be right We are back as Jack Pardee looks over his defensive unit. His ball club leading 7-0. over top of the defender and dropped it inside. Now watch to the right of your screen. You're going to see that Murdoch, good touch on this football, throws it over to the defender there and right in front to Jones. Jones certainly knows to get out of bounds. Nice catch. That's a good play, Ron. Gain of 15 yards in the initial first down of the afternoon with the burnt orange. A couple counted at three. He'll bring it out to the 38. 
Craig Vesey, the senior out of Clear Lake, the right defensive end. He is a two-year letterman. Came up with the stop for the Houston Cougars. The crowd was a little slow in getting here today with this noon start, but as you look around, the student section, and for the most part across the way, is filled. They were looking for between 68 and 70,000 today here in Austin. Murdoch has the ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Glenn Montgomery, I believe. Number 56. Glenn, Glenn Montgomery. Montgomery. Got a hand up. We'll look at it again. Now, this is what you want to do as a defensive lineman. Get those hands up in front of the quarterback. It's like throwing through the woods. But I'm particularly impressed with Texas's offensive line. The time they're giving Murdoch to sit back there, he has had good time to throw the football. That was one of the main concerns they had. He has a little bit of a tendency, it appears, to throw sidearm, which gives that defensive front a little bit of an advantage sometimes. Shuttle pass to Norris. Caught from behind, and he will not pick up the first down. Stopped after a gain of one, and it's Burnett who was trailing on the play, and it is punting time for Texas. I was watching Murdoch come to the sideline. He really got stung on that shuttle, the shuffle pass. They had a blitz on, and they really stuck him as he got the ball off, but to watch him. Houston with a return on this time, and Lil Jadal again puts up a missile. yards again. That's back-to-back 62-yard -back punts by Bobby Liljudal. Well, I believe he was about seventh in the he's top, one of the top seven punters nationally coming into this game. Now, what he wants to do is make sure he just punts with the win and don't punt against it. Here at today's games, we showed you the score of Notre Dame Rice. That went underway with the Irish leading big and the rest of the schedule. Arkansas at Baylor. That one's kicking off at about 30 minutes. Then at two, the Red Raiders at TCU and Louisiana Tech at College Station to take on the Aggies. Kimball Anders back in the ballgame for the Cougars at running back, replacing Weatherspoon. Where? Good protection over the middle, incomplete. Paul Beerman was covering as Dixon, the intended receiver. And Ron, that's how one, that's how one of those sides sophomores grows up with experience but look right there that's what that's a defensive call good series or good offensive call good series tight and tough stay in tight stay tough give the quarterback a lot of time Scogetti the defensive coordinator something to his wide receivers. That 25-second clock is down to two. It gets off the snap at one, and he's going to throw a fly pattern incomplete as Brian Williams couldn't run underneath it. Mark Berry was coming back on the cover. Bierman came over to help him, but with the speed of Brian Williams, he had shucked them both. He certainly had. If Ware has a little more touch on that football, that goes for a long gainer. But you have to be impressed with the multiple facets of this run-and-shoot offense. Everyone talks about it, that it seems as if it's disoriented out there. Everybody's going every different direction, but everybody has a read on the run. Disoriented, huh? Yeah, disoriented. <laughs> 7 to nothing. Cougars leading. 8 minutes and 43 seconds left to play in this opening period. Cougars with a third down situation. Where great protection going long for Phillips to this one is overthrown. And Ron, that's a little surprise. You can hear the Texas crowd reacting to their defense. They know how potent this Houston offense is, and they've got to respond and they're playing very well. They're playing man-to-man, -man, and they've stayed with Houston so far in this first period. Metcalf is the deep man. He's dropped off to around the 41. Good look at Simon Rodriguez. Good punt into the win. Metcalf, fighting with the sun, goes back with a return to the left, and he has an avenue. At the 40, if he's inbounds, he will score. Metcalf goes to distance. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. Oh, boy. What a return by Eric Metcalf. Ronnie took his eye off the ball to pick up the, the, the covering team, put it back on the ball, found out where the covering team was, and then caught the football, took off around the side. Watch right here at the tail end. See, he took his eye off. Now he picks up his blockers right here. Look at the wall of blockers start to get out in front of him. Now, right in here, you're going to see a move he has to make to get 
back inside. Let's watch his feet. Right there he's trying. We can't really see it from that angle, but he's trying to stay in bounds. Sexton is the man, I believe, who pushed him out. It is a 46-yard punt, which into that win is some kind of kick, but 37 on the return. So the Longhorns for the first time today in Houston territory. Murdoch drills it. Tony incomplete, looking at the 25. Number one, rather than number four, Johnny Walker, the intended receiver. Jackson was there defensively for Houston. Well, it's really important that Texas capitalizes on this play. You see Murdoch looking at his hand. He's got plays written on that handband in situations, and they signal in the number of plays. They give him some responsibility to call, but it's really important that they pick up something on this drive. as Callaway was out there on the cover, but the pass play is going to pick up only five. And now to keep this one alive, Dave Rowe, it's going to have to go down to the 19-yard line. And there you see what Murdoch did last week. We thought that he wouldn't have enough poise to come in there and lead his team. He threw for over 300 yards, only the third one ever in Texas history to do that. Round Rock Westwood, that's where young Mr. Murdoch is from. inside the 10-yard line, and he'll bring it back to the 11. As Jackson, who had such a fantastic game last year against the same Texas Longhorns, and you can't just put it up for grabs against this secondary. Well, you can't. I think that Jackson is just standing back here. He doesn't even have coverage. You'll see him. He's not really in the coverage. You see him out in the corner there? He had his coverage, but he came back and read the eyes of the quarterback and played that so very well. And you talked about it last year. Oh, three touchdown reception. NCAA record in that ball game last year. And that one, I don't think there's any other way to describe it than uh, Mark Murdoch just put it up in the air. Prayerful and can't do that against a good football team. Well, I think a lot of times this, this Houston defense is overshadowed by a great offense, but they have an excellent defense, Ron. 7 0, the Cougars are leading. Draw play, Weatherspoon hit by Dwayne Duncan as he crosses the 10. Dave. He comes out of Westlake High School. He's a junior, 6'4", 234 pounds. The Cougars now with their no huddle offense. His brother is Bobby Duncan, number 46, who plays left defensive end. Going long, Dixon overthrown as Stanley Richard at the 40-yard line had the cover. Ron, I know our audience out there, as you were talking about Duncan being from a local young man, we went by a high school football game last night, and that would have been a big crowd for a lot of college football games. I couldn't believe the number of people in that stance we drove by. Dave, the, the entire state of Texas, and now the playoffs are beginning, it'll absolutely amaze you. It's not always just the 5A schools, but the crowds that you'll see of 20, 22, and 23,000 people that come out to see the high schools play, particularly when they go to the playoffs. It's almost like the ranks of early ball. Pressure from Seed, and he, the ball is thrown away, and it's intercepted at the four-yard line. And Wendell Sheldon says he is down. Mark Steed was the man with the pressure. So we had back-to-back -back quarterback situations of throwing the ball away and getting in trouble. And Andre Ware, he's shaken up after the tackle. Well, watch this play. You're going to see number 66, I believe it is, come from the right side. And then Mark Steed right there. Yep, right. He makes the tackle. Now watch right there. See, there's the knee down. And, and right there, you can see that he's in excellent position to make the call the official is. And there's the interception. Simon Rodriguez will not get his full 15 yards this time. He's going to have to get this, this punt up in a hurry. Look at the wind grab that one. Metcalf has to run away from it, and Houston will doubt it at the 35. Thompson is the man who is downfield in the coverage, 34 yards in the kick. But under those circumstances, that's a very good job by Simon Rodriguez. 
want to see why he didn't throw the football. Watch the receiver. In this case, it's, Phillips. it's Jason Phillips. Now watch. See, he slips and falls down here. Now he's in a crowd, and there's a throw out there. There's the interception. Stanley Richards thought, wow. <laughs> May have a free one here. So Texas takes it over. Second time in a row that they have taken it over inside the Cougar 40-yard line. side linebacker out of Rayville, Louisiana. Number 88 comes up to make the stop. And Ron, one of the things is we've watched Metcalf over the last few years is his ability, once he gets in the hole, to just accelerate. He's one of those running backs that seems like he's running in at, at full speed and all of a sudden just bursts through that hole. You never know which gear he's got it in. Unless he's behind you. Pass looking. Incomplete. Nelson, the intended receiver. Ball was just a little bit underthrown. Kevin Nelson, a youngster out of the Houston area, out of Houston Dulles High School, he has had to come back twice from shoulder problems with uh, with a collarbone. Now you see there Murdoch looking at his hand. He looks over for the play. There's the hand. See on his wrist there. Those are all the plays that he calls because he is just a freshman out there. He's got a long career ahead of him. Third and five. And you see what the Horns have done on third down conversions. Draw play. Norris will have the first down and more. Inside the 15 and he's down to the 13. Ellison comes up from that safety spot, but it's a gain of 12. Well, you remember the old give the leg away and take the leg away play? Watch Darren Norris on this play. He's going to give a leg to the linebacker right there, and boom, just sidesteps. And that was 46. Lathan, who's a good outside linebacker, and once he breaks into that secondary, he's just got a big gainer down inside the 15-yard line. Now they're going to say officially 17 yards in the carry. The pitch looks for a block from Norris. He's going to run out of bounds inside the 10, and he'll say just shy of the 70 yard line. Boy, and what a block he picked up from his tight end, Stephen Clark, on that play. Clark had the linebacker just locked inside. You may see it on the left of your screen. He's number 82, and he's just got his man just locked inside. There he is in your picture. That's what allows, and the good block by Darren Norris allows Metcalf to get outside. Chris Ellison coming from the backside to help push the play out of bounds. Seven to nothing. Cougars leading. Clock is stopped with 6.04 to play in this opening period. Cougars coming with a corner blitz. Murdoch running for his life, and he throws it away. Don't know how many times that the opposition has seen that, but Alton Montgomery was coming with a blitz from the outside, and it certainly messed up the works. And the quarterback should have seen this, because the cornerback, the cornerback came off. There you see number 29, Alton Montgomery, who's the strong safety coming in. Quarterbacks have got to be able to read that and adjust quickly. Murdoch didn't see it as quick as he should have. Third down and four, as Clark brings in the play from the bench. Texas needs the three-and-a-half-yard line for the first down. Draw play to Metcalf. Left side has running room, and he will have the first down. Inside the four and down to the three. Callaway for that right cornerback spot. Comes up to make the tackle for the Cougars. What an excellent call. It's a roll draw. In other words, you start strong side, give it to him. He comes back and look, see how he picks up the blocks? Now watch this move at the end right here where he gets the feet out of bounds. Oh, boy. If he doesn't slip right there, he's down and in the end zone. He is a, an exciting person to watch run the football. You see Kerry Cash checking into the ball game, number 19. You might look for the Longhorns with their alley-oop play or the... The lock pass right here. They did it last week against Texas Tech. They will stay with the run. Metcalf, right side, shy of the end zone. They'll say at the one-foot line. Thomas stepped up to make the hit and deny him the end zone. Good line search, good control here by both the offense and the defense. And Metcalf just finds that little position. You'll just see him squirt inside and dive for the line. He looked as if he may have put the ball out on the line. That looked awfully close. If he comes down with the ball on the line, that's a touchdown. That was close. Second down and goal. Less than a yard to go. In fact, there you can see it. And the back will let you listen to it. Metcalf tag 
moved in the backfield. It is Montgomery who came roaring through. And Alton Montgomery out of Griffin, Georgia. A junior college transfer drops him for a three-yard loss. Boy, Montgomery, you wouldn't think that he would be this strong, but watch the arm. Woo! He just, it's almost like he ran into a train or something there. That arm of Montgomery just jerked him down. Third down for the Longhorns. The ball just inside the Houston four-yard line. Murdoch, backside blitz is on, throws it incomplete as he drilled Norris with the pass, incomplete, and the Longhorns will have to go for the three points. And you can see how much the pressure that Houston put on disrupts the play and the tempo of Mark Murdoch. He's not a cool quarterback under a lot of pressure because he's just a freshman. He did very well driving him down there. When his line gives him enough time, he is a good quarterback, good straight drop back passing quarterback. Clemens, 9 of 14, his longest, 55. Murdoch is the holder. On the tee, it is up, and he's good. So let's take a break with 4.10 left to play in this opening period. It is Houston 7 and Texas 3. We'll be right back. David McWilliams on the sideline, and I'm sure he's disappointed to have to go for the three points after his ball club had driven inside the one-yard line. But Dave, the point you made about the overlooked Houston defense gave a good indication right there of just how good they are. They are a good defensive unit. They don't get the credits, because, but when you look at yards per carry against them, they're one of the lowest in the Southwest Conference. You look at the average completion percentage, 39%. They are one of the best in the Southwest Conference. But the problem is, is when you score fast, you give the offense a chance to have the football, and you drive it a lot. David, total offense, the numbers we have here in the booth is Houston 47 yards, Texas with 49. We have seen a, what appeared to be more action than that. Dixon will watch this one go over his head and sail out of the end zone. Marker is down as we take a look at the scoring drive. 10 plays, 32 yards. Clements with the field goal from 20. And Houston says we would like to see Texas kick it over again. Especially as we listen to the call of all sides, especially when you have kicked the ball out of the end zone, you've just had them run all the way downfield. Now they're tired to take that deep gasping breath. Now they line back up for five yards more. They say, hey, we want to see if you can do it again. Jimmy. We had a real nice conversation with Jack Hardy. He is a really nice person. He been, a, been under a lot of pressure this season to turn his team around. He started doing it last year. And boy, he has got the respect of the Southwest Conference teams and national teams because he told me in, in, before the game that he's got several bowls that are looking at him. So they're kind of excited this year in Houston. They've certainly not to look ahead, but they have a ball game next week that is extremely important with Wyoming coming in, who is an awfully, awfully good ball club. Ball is fumbled at the five-yard line and then taken. And it's Paul Smith up the middle, going to be hit by Bobby Rhodes as he crosses the 25. Also Wilson downfield on the special teams. I think that analogy that you made about David McWilliams, his defense <laughs> getting drowned in the Pacific or getting drowned in the Atlantic, <laughs> he's gone with the blitz, he's gone with the upfront defense, he's gone with man-to-man -man coverage, and so far, he hasn't been burned with it. They've played very well on defense. They've held uh, Houston in Bay, 47 yards. That's not many yards for this team with the average that they have. Cougars leading by four with just over four minutes to play. Some changes defensively for the Longhorns. We'll give them to you in just a moment as Jet Brown goes in motion. Shovel pass. Dixon hit at the line of scrimmage. Going to be knocked down after a gain of one. You see Roger Fritcher, number 66, young man who injured a knee against Arkansas, couldn't play last week. He was the man with the stop. Mark Steed is 87. We have called his number, but the right defensive end is 26, Charles Hunter. Started off as a freshman as a running back, and Dave, his very first ball game at Texas had over 100 yards, but since switched to defense. And today, as they, Coach McWilliams said he wanted to get more quickness on the line of scrimmage, 
as far as pressure on the quarterback. So Hunter is at the right defensive end spot from time to time. Where good protection has a man open complete at the 48-yard line. Jason Phillips right in front of the Texas bench, and that is enough for the Houston Cougar first down. Well, there's a mismatch on this play. You'll see that Dwayne Duncan is going to try to cover Phillips out of the backfield here. And when he turns, and Phillips has got all that room, you can see the adjustment he can make. 48 is Duncan trying to cover him man-to-man. Then -man. you see the uh, safety, Paul Bierman, coming over, trying to give him help. But he couldn't get over in time. We talk about the 25-second clock a while ago. We understand on the bench from our people down there that Jack Party was warning Ware about the fact that that 25-second clock was getting down very close. In fact, that was a delay of game, and it was not called. Yet now they have whistled it down as the marker had come from downfield. And just as we talk about it, Ware did not get the playoff in time. Ron, as we look at the, uh, the official called delay of game, this is a call to lay a game, but as we look at it, Ware takes a lot of time. Even though he doesn't make a huddle, he's still taking 15, 20 seconds, walking back and forth across the line, yelling to his wide receivers on the right, yelling to his wide receivers on the left, and it takes a lot of time. Now, those 25-second clocks are on the scoreboards in the end zone, and they're hard to see. There you see it on the scoreboard, but that's a long way from the football field. That's the one that is behind Houston right now. There is another one in the north end zone. down at 15. Shovel pass hit in the backfield and knocked down is Jason Phillips. I mean, as soon as he got the pass, Britt Hager and Mark Steed were all over him, and it's going to be a loss of four. Now the Cougars with a second down at 19. Well, watch Hager on this play. He's the middle linebacker, number 60. He's going to be in the backfield. You see 56 in there also. He's coming in, but they're way up on the line. They're crushing the line back, trying to blitz through to get that penetration, and you can't throw a shuffle pass in that situation. Looking for Dixon, he's got it, and he will score. And Dave, I am dying to see it again because the receiver on the right side was in motion before the ball was snapped. It certainly looked like it to me when I looked across. I thought for sure, and now a flag goes down in the end zone. I don't think that's going to affect the touchdown, though. But we may be able to see that play after the kick. Well, first we'll have to hear what the call is. I believe it may be the celebration penalty where he didn't give the football to the referee. just kind of threw it down and spiked it. But again, I thought he was in motion also as he came along the line there. I didn't think he was set. So the 15 yards will be stepped off on the kickoff. go on top with Roman Anderson to attempt the extra point. Anderson is good, so with 134 left in this opening period, let's take another look. Well, look at Dixon on the top of your screen. Yep, you see right there? The ball is snapped. Wow. Oh, boy. If he wasn't in motion, I haven't seen motion. I may want to take another look at that. Tell our producer, Johnny Tyus. I'd like to take another look at that, Johnny. <laughs> he says commercial. So, so let's take a break. 134 left to play in this opening period. And Houston goes on top by a count of 14 to 3. Let's take a break. Ron, let's watch James Dixon at the top of your screen there. He's number 22. Now watch when the ball is snapped here. Watch quickly. There's Dixon in motion. There's the ball snap that wasn't even close. That was motion. But the results are still the same at seven points. Dixon from 61 yards. And the Cougars go on top 14-3. to three. Well, that's one that you run over in the coaching reel and said, how'd they miss that one? <laughs> with the kickoff. 
15-yard penalty and with the win, this one is going to come down at the 30-yard line. As the return goes to the left side, Samuel's looking for a spot to run, and he won't even get back to the 30. Good coverage by the special teams for the University of Houston as Ball, one of the first men downfield, along with Bearden. Apple Roundup, some of the other scores. Notre Dame, 31 to 6 over Rice. Well, that makes a believer out of me. And West Virginia, 7 to 3 over Cincinnati. And that's in the first period. As the other ball games are beginning around the conference, we'll update you on them later on this afternoon. inside the 30. That's going to be a gain of only about one. Is Jackson very quickly on the close. Well, this is what you see if you're a defensive back. You can see Metcalf's going to make a crossing pattern here. As soon as he gets the football right here, he's going to turn around and the defensive back is going to be right in his face. That's Johnny Jackson. Mr. Metcalf certainly draws a lot of attention. Boy, he does, doesn't he? Oh, boy. Metcalf trying to run off the block of Stan Thomas, and you can see Metcalf went inside instead of out, and he's going to be knocked down after a gain of couple, and we are finally under one minute to play in this opening period, and uh, this was kicked off just about an hour ago. Well, it's been kind of a slow, boring game so far, Ron. <laughs> Not if you like offense. 14-3, to three, the Cougars on top. overthrown looking for Metcalf out of the backfield on the third down play and Texas with that incompleted pass the only break they get here Dave is with 15 seconds showing on the clock they get to kick with the wind yes they do I think if, if Murdoch had had a little bit more time to find Tony Jones across the middle he was wide open you just you can't zero in on that one receiver and go to your primary receiver all the time you have to have confidence in your line that you can come off and pick up that secondary receiver Lil Jadal averaging 61 yards per kick so far this afternoon. That first one they said officially was 60. His second one was 62. And here a marker is down as the Texas special teams have had a world of problems so far today. They have. I was looking at the upbacks and I've been in this position. And what he did is he was just leaning forward and just fell out of his stance. He had to put a foot forward, caused illegal procedure by the upback on that play. Gives Lil Jadal a little bit more room to punt. Now he's got 70 yards he can punt. Driving spiral again. Anders at the 16. Finally picks it up and is going to be hit. Bobby Rhodes on the special team following that 59-yard punt. seconds showing on the clock that's what the Houston Cougars have left to work into the wind in this opening quarter with. they have moved the ball very effective into the wind now they have to make the adjustment and Ron the biggest adjustment for a quarterback is to play with that wind because all of a sudden those passes that you're throwing with just a little bit extra you've got to take a little bit off so it does change it but he's got one more throw at least with this wind continues at quarterback. It's Jet Brown in motion to the bottom part of your screen. And it is Weatherspoon and he slips down at the line of scrimmage. Contact as the Houston crowd had happened right in front of them and they thought that possibly the hit should have been marked. We'll talk more about it in just a moment as that is the end of the first quarter with our score. The Houston Cougars 14 at Texas 3. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. Houston Cougars up by 11 points over the University of Texas. Right now we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network.
some of the near capacity crowd on hand today as Jack Pardee faces the sidelines. We mentioned in the first quarter. Marking off a penalty, they they may have thrown a flag on that last play run. I didn't see they, a flag. They, they picked it up, and what Wendell Sheldon has said is unsportsmanlike conduct called against the offense. So the penalty moved back to the 10 yard line. Of course, that would I be. would assume, in looking at the down marker, that it was a dead ball foul because they have registered second down. So for the Cougars, we reset it for you. It's going to be a second down. And it looks like about 20 yards to go. The but ball they, just across the 10. But they called it against Houston. That was surprising. The Cougar fans across the way had uh, hollered at the end of the quarter that they thought it should have been against Texas. Draw play. Spoon looking for a spot to run. He's going to take it for four, maybe five. Close to the 15-yard line. Britt Hager from the middle linebacking spot along with Bobby Duncan. First quarter stats. Look at the yards rushing for Houston. Of course, that's that's normal, minus two yards. Not with Witherspoon, but the 129 yards passing to just 22. That shows you both the power of their offense plus the dominance of wind. The time of possession surprisingly just about even. Third down for Houston. Where? Going long and wide open. Dixon and the ball is knocked away as Bubba Jacks came from all the way across field to knock the ball down and for a moment Dixon was just very lonely right in front of the Texas bench. Well Jax is playing the safety and he reads the quarterback. Now look how far he comes over here. There he is 25 in your picture. Comes all the way across to break this ball out but you were right. James Dixon had floated down the sideline. The cornerback evidently felt he had safety coverage help but he didn't on that play until late. Metcalf to the bottom of your screen as you look at Simon Rodriguez. Chris Samuels was the man on the other side. Driving, great kick. Off the hands of Samuels. Inside and will go into the end zone. Ron, that may be 85 yards. And if it, I believe they may have called him touching the football. The ball was touched by Samuels on the field of play and Weatherspoon in the end zone recovers the ball and the officials say touchdown as it went off Samuel's hand. Let's see if we can see that again. It's from the 15-yard line. It's an 85-yard punt, but let's see if he touches the football. Watch Samuel's hands here. Oh, boy, if he touched it, he had long fingernails. Wait a minute, David. Oh, boy, I don't, I don't believe this. <laughs> he did not touch the football. He reached for it. He did not touch the football. Perhaps we can get uh, someone to stop the football right where it crosses his fingertips, but it looked as if there was air in between there or what you would consider light. It didn't look like the, the trajectory of the football changed at all, Ron. Anderson with the extra point attempt. Okay, let's look at it again very slow. Now watch right here and see if the ball, the, the direction of the ball changes. Nope. No, he, he wasn't even, he wasn't within two or three inches of it. So first a motion penalty that was not called and now an untouched fumble. We're going to take a break. 14-03 left until halftime at our score. Houston 21-3. David McWilliams pacing the sidelines. He has lost that case, and it is now a 21-3 ball game with the Cougars on top, and we still have 14-03 left to play in this first half. And Ron, what you look for on that play is you look for the, the ball to change the direction that it goes. If it's going to skip off his hands, if the ball is going to change. Now, the referee or the official is a lot closer than we were, but I thought our picture showed that the ball did not touch his hand. Metcalf at the three-yard line. Runs out of bounds as he crosses the 25 at the 26. Fails downfield of the special teams. And the Texas Longhorns, as we take a look at the West Virginia score, they have tallied another touchdown, leading Cincinnati now by eight. Well, Ron, one thing in... in 
support, I guess you would say, of Texas is that they have faced adversity all year long, and they've, they've rebounded from it. And I'm sure that's the talk that David McWilliams will have with his team when they get to halftime, which is a long way away. going to be hit on the ankles as he crosses the 36 to the 37. Callaway from his safety spot, but it's going to be an 11-yard pickup. Number 25. And Ron, the rebound from something like this, I can imagine, because I've been out in a situation like this on the field, what you want right now is your offense to control the football. It's something that Texas has not done all year. They're a very explosive offense, but they need to control the football and get their poise and confidence back in their offense. Squeezes through a hole, crosses the 40 as Lamar Lathan comes up defensively, and the Cougars with a player down at the 42. That looks like Craig Vesey. See how quickly the trainers get there. They don't move them, of course, until they can talk with them. He's, a, he's alert, obviously. You can see him moving, but they have good training staffs at both these schools. They take excellent care with these football players. They're well-conditioned, and these trainers are well-trained. That looks like his left either knee or ankle. You can see he's wearing a brace on that left knee. We'll get a report on him. Craig Vesey. So that means that number 97, Darren Warren, will come into the ballgame. Darren is a junior out of Crockett, Texas. He's a two-year letterman. Twenty-one to three, our score. David, I would love for us to have a ball game one of these Saturdays with no controversy. <laughs> Good heaven. <Well. laughs> hey, I guess as I just said in the truck, we, that'd be too easy. Well, we've had a few, haven't we? Boy, <laughs> like every one that uh, that we have watched this year. Metcalf, not much there. Hammered down. You see, 64. Keith Jenkins roll him to the ground as he crosses the 45, and now it's third down. Texas needs about a yard and a half to pick up the first. Well, you can see the position of Earl uh, Eric Metcalf. Boy, that's a great position. Look at the people that are ahead of him. Rosie Leakes and Earl Campbell. Well, there's some good football players ahead of him. He's moving up that ladder, isn't he? 4,400 by Campbell is <laughs> I don't think that's simply reachable. unbelievable, isn't it? I don't believe that's reachable. Not in this era. Metcalf turns it up for half the first down as he takes it to around the 50-yard line. Alfred Oglesby, one of the first men, along with Montgomery. And, Ron, I want to tell you, this is smart play calling by David McWilliams and his staff. He goes, what you want to do, you've just been shocked. Your defense is shocked, your offense is shocked, your quarterback is shocked, everybody is shocked out there. And what you want to do is gather composure, and you go to your number one man, and that's Eric Metcalf. Pitch the ball to him, run a little safe pass, don't make a mistake, and gather back your composure. They fake the deep draw. Murdoch drills it, and it's caught by Tony Jones. On the comeback, and it looked as though Alton Montgomery was set to make the interception. Jones took it away from him for a gain of 11. Well, this is a nice play by Tony Jones. This is sure interception written all over it, but you're going to see Tony Jones step in front of Alton Montgomery. It looks like it's thrown right to Montgomery. Watch it with the path of Jones right here. Step right in front of him, and you can see Montgomery left just catching the wind. Nice play by Tony Jones. Callaway wound up finishing him off. couple and then we'll get out of harm's way. Tuggle, one of a couple of kids on this Houston team who come from the Austin area, is the man who forced him out of bounds. Don't you know that's a, that's a thrill for him to come back and play here in his hometown. His mom's here, dad's here, the whole family's here. And of course, he grew up watching this Texas football team, and now he's got the chance to play against them. 21 to 3, our score with 11.49 left until halftime. We'll take it inside the 35 to the 34. Price 
checks into the ball game. I believe, yep, number 21. We were told that didn't think he was going to play today, but he is lining up in the left corner right now, working against Tony Jones. Big third down play for the Longhorns. Pressure for the outside over the middle to Metcalf incomplete. Lamar Lathan was there on the coverage. Look at Murdoch. He is upset. He walks out. Now, he's a fiery leader. They say he leads by example. He's very cool in there. Now, you'll see Lathan. He's playing across on the coverage here. Now, does he grab him right there? Oh, I don't know. Looks as if he's got his hand on him. I think that was after the play, though. Well, you can see Metcalf saying, look, see, he pulled my jersey. But the referee, or the official, I should say, was right there. Callaway, the deep man, is Lil Jadal with the ball at the 34-and-a-half-yard line. Even with the win, looking for the sideline of this one. Lops it inside the 20, and it's going to go out of bounds into the vicinity of the 10. In fact, that's where they're going to mark it down. 24 yards of the kick, as the Cougars will have to scrimmage from their own 10-yard line. And let's go back and take a look at those musts one more time. Well, the Miller Light must say that Houston has to run its off offense with confidence, and that's what they are starting to do. They're becoming much more confident in their receiving. They dropped a lot of balls to start. They have to eliminate turnovers. They have been the turnoveree, the receptor of, of the interception, and they have to disrupt that normal quarterback timing, and that's on Mark Murdoch, and they've, they've accomplished that to, to a degree, but really it's been capitalization on big breaks, that missed motion, and of course that, that somewhat tipped punt that went for a touchdown. Where Phillips drops the ball at the nine-yard line. Mark Berry and Irish Lewis on the cover for Texas in the flat over there, but the ball incomplete. It'll bring up a second down and ten. Ron, in this situation, you kind of get in between because you want a blitz to get pressure on the quarterback, but you realize if you don't get to him, and that's what they're showing there. They're saying, when you come out of there, well, that's an offensive series, I should say. But when you don't get to him, you get burned. And Ware has got the, the weapons out there to burn you if you don't get him with, him to, with the blitz. Ware, marker is down, pass incomplete. As he overthrew it, and from where it's thrown, I believe offensive holding is going to be called as Oscar Giles was trying to pressure the quarterback, and that's where the marker came. decision here is to accept that penalty but it would only be about a five yard penalty or to take the play and bring up third down and ten penalty is declined third down is what it will be 21 to 3 Houston leading Texas section for the Longhorns coming to their feet across the way. Paul Smith, the intended receiver. Bubba Jacks had the coverage, and on the incompletion, it'll be fourth down and punting time for the Cougars. We know that they had, I thought it was an 85-yard punt last time, but I understand officially they've only marked a 63-yard punt well, for the fumble. Yeah, if, if he did touch the ball, that's where it will be marked in. Pressure up the middle, gets his kick away. Metcalf at the 45. Gets through a couple, winds up in the Cougar territory at the 48. Houston says there's a fumble. And Houston has recovered. Weatherspoon has the football. Oh boy. Let's look at this and let's watch when the fumble occurs. 
because I did not see the ball come out clean. Now, what he's trying to do there is just trying to find a seam. Now he's just trying to get down. There's the ball. Never looks. I just didn't see the ball come out clearly. I, I perhaps missed it, Ron, but again, the official right there to call it. Let's take a quick look at that, see if we can look at Well, we've got to watch game action first, Rob. Maybe we'll get another peek at that. Houston right back to the line of scrimmage. Ball is fumbled on the snap, scramble for it at the 46-yard line. Wrestles the ball away from Metcalf. On the fumble, Houston recovered, and it is a second down and 12 as a scrimmage from their own 46-yard line. The Weatherspoon proving that he is not only valuable on offense, but also on the special team. Double pass into the middle of Dixon. Maybe the line of scrimmage, but that is it, as Lee Brockman comes in to make the first contact in uh, Brett Hager. Here's the storyline of the ball game so far. Of course, it's been built with that 11-yard touchdown catch and the 61-yard touchdown catch by, by Houston. And then Texas, of course, they fumbled three punts. Result, two touchdowns for Houston. They drove one in, of course, recovered that one in the end zone. That has been a big part of the scoring of 21 points by Houston. It's been great just great advantage once they get the football. Let's take a timeout with 9 minutes 27 seconds left until halftime. The Cougars leading by 18. We'll be right back. There you see the clock and the score. Houston with a third down and 12. Up the far sideline and it is incomplete. Irish Lewis with the cover on the play. Williams, the intended receiver. Ron, I thought Williams ran out of bounds on that play. If he wasn't, he was awfully close. Of course, you can't come back in once you run out of bounds. It looked as if he was out of bounds back in there. Well, probably the incompletion. Don't have to worry about the worry decision. About That's right. Thank goodness. <laughs> Look right here again. Perhaps you can see. Well, you can't even see it on that angle, but I thought he was out of bounds. Must have been very close. Rodriguez with the punt. Bearcats ball four. Did it go? Yes, it did. Inside the two-yard line. 51 yards on the kick by Simon Rodriguez. And they're going to mark the ball out a yard and a half in front of the Texas goal line. Well, I don't know if you can punt any better than Simon Rodriguez did on that one. Ron, let's take another look at the Miller Light Mucks for Texas. They had to pressure the quarterback. They have not done that so far. They had to sustain drive, and that is a difficult thing for them. Use Metcalf even more. They have been effective when they've used him on that one drive, but they kind of got bogged down. But Texas has not done so far what they needed to do to win this football game. Metcalf from his old end zone tries to find a spot for real. Johnny Jackson going to be pushed out of bounds by Jackson very close to the first down. I want to tell you there are very few football players that can do what Eric Metcalf has just done. And that is deep in your own end zone. Look at this. He changes on about the one yard line. Says, whoops, I'm going back this way. Look at Murdoch get, just trying to get out of his way. But what a nice play to get his team out of trouble. When I said use Eric Metcalf more, that's why you use Eric Metcalf more because he is such an elusive runner. Shasta looking on under the bright sunny skies of Austin, Texas this afternoon. Interesting shot right there. <laughs> Shot's very accurate, though. So far, the Cougars have paged the Longhorns. Straight ahead on the first down drive is Darren Norris. He will have it as he comes out close to the 14-yard line. It seems like more and more we say, you know, this is a vital drive or this is an important series. But really, for Texas, they have got to get out of their own territory. With, with just under nine minutes left, they don't want to give the ball back to Houston in their own field territory. So you've got to drive out and get one or two first downs, at least. Kerry Cash 
option motion. Metcalf hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll bring it to the 15, but that's it. As Warren and Keith Jenkins step right up into the hole and make the hit. No running room there. with these running plays, and as you see, we still have over eight minutes to play until halftime. And a ball game that has kind of rocked on ebb and flow, I guess. In the backfield, Metcalf gets by one, gonna be hit again from behind. He's gonna wind up with maybe a key to one of the play, how I don't know, as Warren comes from the backside to make the stop. He has got to be someone that can gather his balance quicker and get his his momentum going forward faster than anyone I've seen in a long while. He has the ability to get knocked off balance and gather his balance back and get back on track running. And that time he turned what should have been a three-yard loss into about a one-yard game. Third down for Texas. pressure and he will be sacked. Jenkins again. His second quarterback sack of the afternoon. Ray back at the six yard line. Well, on a play like that, you have to get rid of the football. We talked about him not being a mobile quarterback back there. Now when he sees this pressure right here and he avoids it, now throw the ball. Just throw it downfield, 8, 10 yards. Don't take a 12 to 15 yard sack because now you're punting out of the back of your end zone. Just throw the ball away. You've got to get rid of it in that situation. Kimball Anders, the deep man for the Cougars, as you look at Bobby Liljador. Hanging spiral into the wind. Anders loses the ball. Yard line. And Ron, I want to take another look at this one because I thought it went right through his hands and didn't touch him. <laughs> the ball went through so quickly. <laughs> now watch here. Let's see if we can see it. I think it did touch him. The official was right there. But look the way the ball comes down. Right off the end of the stringer. There you go. Well, maybe that evens up. I, I think if, if Texas can score, and you don't want to even up, I know that, but uh, it's a good break. David McWilliams might, the difference between a touchdown and a 50-yard line, David McWilliams might argue with you about evening up. <laughs> well, you don't try to even up football games. That's certainly true. Norris, the safety valve, gets away from Lathan, and it is knocked down very hard at the 45-yard line. Alton Montgomery comes up from that safety spot. Really took Norris down at the 45. Charlie Seep is coming out of the ball game, and Chuck Johnson is coming in at offensive tackle for the Longhorns. Around the Southwest Conference today, Arkansas three to nothing over the Baylor Bears. That one at Waco, and that's it right now. the line of scrimmage. Vesey steps up from that right defensive end spot. Knocks him down after a gain of only one. And it's going to be a third down situation. And if Texas wants to keep this drive alive, they got to take it down inside the Houston 41. And watch for Eric Metcalf to be involved in this play because he is involved in about 40 to 50 percent of their offense. But a lot of that is on third down because he's such a, a sure-handed wide re uh, receiver out of the backfield plus running back. So he perhaps will be used in this situation. Draw play to Metcalf. Turns it back up the middle. BZ knocks him down. He's not going to have the first down. They're going to spot him down at the 42. Boy, you talk about getting your feet back down on the ground quickly. You can't make cuts unless you make very short, quick steps. Now, they may go for this on fourth down, but watch the foot action here. Change the outside, sees the seam back inside. Good juking right there, get those feet down, and picks up everything he can. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Texas go in this situation. They've got to do something to spur up their offense. Here they come to the line of scrimmage. Cougars leading 21-3, to and on fourth down, straight ahead with the quarterback sneak. You just about credit that entire defensive front. Oglesby, I believe, the man at the bottom of the pile. 
Well, that's a kind of a surprise move because we talked about Murdoch not being a good running back, but Corson behind Allen Champagne and Soleil, his big gardens in uh, center, he felt they could blow him off the line and perhaps pick it up, but it, it's going to be awfully close, Ron. You see Ellison standing there at the line of scrimmage. Chris was saying that uh, Texas did not make it. Stretch the change out and first down Longhorns. And I mean barely the nose of the football. Well, an inch as good as a mile. <laughs> they don't ask how much did you make it by. They ask whether you made it or not. But you get the feeling uh, in this football game that Texas has got to come down and score on this drive to get the momentum going back in just before halftime. They want to be able to, to go in on a real positive offensive note. See the clock running down under four and a half to play until halftime. Murdoch over the middle has Terry Taz. Enough for the first down at the 30-yard line. Montgomery for the safety spot comes over quickly to make the tackle. Take a look at it from ground level. And look, no pressure in Murdoch's face. That's when he's at his best. And he threads it right between two defenders into Curry Cash's hands. That's what Murdoch does best. Drop back seven steps, set up, let his pocket form around him, and throw the football. He does not bail out of the pocket well when he's under pressure. A nice strike by Mark Murdoch. About to go into four minutes. See if Montgomery comes on the blitz. He does draw play, hit in the backfield, and he will be knocked down as Norris cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. And Oglesby is the man who hit him, and you can see the blitz coming from the outside. And that's the important thing. You can see the blitz coming. The quarterback has got to feel this, and he's got to be able to audibleize out. See, he has nowhere to go. He's set on that play. But he's only... Well, go ahead. Ron. I think possibly that could have been an audible with that play. The fact is, it didn't get the job done on the well, tackle. The blitz was coming from the outside. But you called it. You could see the blitz, and you have to react to that quickly. Murdoch on second down over the middle. Incomplete. Tony Jones, the intended receiver. Jones on this crossing pattern. The question is, did he get hit before he, the ball was was there? You're going to see him right in the middle of your screen. Watch the football coming in there. No, no. Good play. Excellent play there by Johnny Jackson, of course. I think what the groan was about was after the play was over, that Jones was spun down. I don't think there was any question about whether there was interference or not. A lot of people throw away from Johnny Jackson because he is that good a cornerback. Third down. Blitz is coming up the middle this time. Put it up high for Tony Jones. Just off his fingertips. Jones was there, and the ball just overthrown. Price was on the cover, but he was a step behind. Oh, the difference between winning and losing is just a couple inches. And on this play, it's just off the fingertips of Tony Jones. Look how close it is to his fingertips. And watch the quarterback. You want to see what it's like? The difference? He knows he's got it. All of a sudden, oh, no, look how close it was. And you can see Murdoch reacting to that pass. Field goal attempt coming up. This will be a 50-yard attempt for Wayne Clemens. As you saw in the graphic early on of the ballgame, his longest of the year is 55. But this one into a very stiff breeze. Kick is on the way. Wynn has got it, and it is not going to make it. It hits five yards into the end zone for the touchback. And, buddy, that you could see the wind grab that thing and just knock it down like a big hand. Yes, it took off. It took off and then all of a sudden just died. So let's take a break. Three minutes, four seconds left until halftime, but our score remains. Houston 21 at Texas 3. Ron Frankel along with Dave Rowe back at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. Cougars don't have a first down this quarter, but they have not had to. They've taken advantage of everything. Oh, they really have. Every break, and football games are a lot of times dependent upon breaks. Every break has gone the Cougars' way. They've capitalized on two of them for touchdowns. If they don't get that, this football game is wide open. I still think that Texas has a good shot in this football game to come back because they have surprised Houston with that good basic man-on-man -man coverage. Cougars right now have 3.04 left until halftime. And, of course, the way they can move the football, that is adequate time. Where are the option play? Weatherspoon with a head down. Has five, has ten, brings into the open. Caught from behind by Garza and is finally stopped out at the 35-yard line of Texas. Well, this little guy runs. He runs like something I, you don't see very often. It's got to be.
be a pleasure for our coach to watch him. He has all movement. See the direction change right there. He's got a very low center of balance, and he just sort of, sort of rambles, picks up a couple blockers, and just kind of rambles for those big yards. Coming into this game, Ron, he's averaging 8.7 yards per carry, and every team says, oh, it can't be that good. It can't be that good, but every game he's averaging 8.7. run. And once he gets his balance right there and he gets his shoulders squared up, you can see an arm tackle's not going to bring him down. Just, they just caught his foot or else he rambles for another five or ten yards. Texas makes a couple of changes at defensive tackle as they get packing back in the ball game. Trying to shore up the running situation. Pass to the end zone. It is touchdown. Brian Williams. Well, I talked about how much time they needed or didn't need they did not even use a minute on the drive. And the Cougars are up 27 to 3. Well, we talk again about the explosiveness of this run and shoot offense. They can score anywhere. They get two big runs by spoon, they call them here in Houston. And all of a sudden they burst down there. Then when you're thinking running play, they're going to try to control the ball. They come back and throw that fly pattern. And when you're in man-on-man -man coverage, the reason that James Dixon and Jason Phillips have got 60 to 70 catches apiece is because they are great one-on-one -on -one ball players. Extra point attempt by Roman Anderson is good. Let's take another look at it. This is just a fly pattern. In other words, he just takes off from the line, just flies downfield, looks underneath the football, and this time it's Brian Williams with a great catch. Here again, no, no pressure on where. Once you have a defense down, you can do things like this. And Brian Williams, just on this fly pattern downfield, just catches it right in stride. So let's take a break as you take a look at Brian Williams, who has just tallied seven more for the Cougars. And they are up by 25. 41 seconds. That's how long the drive lasted. 67 yards. We're throwing the 25-yard touchdown pass to Williams. As Adams is about to kick it off. 28 to 3. The Cougars leading with 223 showing on the scoreboard clock until halftime. one out of the back of the end zone, so the Longhorns will be 80 yards away with just over two minutes. And on the Apple scoreboard, Notre Dame rolling over Rice in the third period. West Virginia, a little bit closer contest than folks had expected against Cincinnati. It certainly is true. And Southern Mississippi losing to Auburn in the first period, 14-0. Nebraska and Iowa State. Nebraska ranked seventh in, this, uh, in the polls. Nothing, nothing in the first. And Arkansas and Baylor as the Razorbacks have just scored a touchdown as they lead 9 to nothing. That one in that opening period at Waco. Murdoch dumps the pass off. That's Deion Cockrell at the 30, 35, at the 40. And then is knocked down very hard at the 42 by Montgomery. So Deion Cockrell, who is a sophomore out of San Antonio, into the ball game, as you see, trainer Tom Wilson working on the tape job on where on the sideline. Possibly trying to tighten that thing up just a little bit, Dave. Well, we saw him sprain his ankle earlier. Surprising that they do it with two minutes left. They don't just go in and retape it in the uh, locker room. Murdoch to throw again. Metcalf on the sideline. And Jackson is right there to see that he doesn't turn it upfield. Surprise here by Houston to play this prevent so early. They played very well in their coverage. We talked about it being an excellent defense, but they're dropping three men about 18 to 20 yards off the line trying to play a prevent, and that's a good time to attack that prevent. You throw underneath like Murdoch has done with success. 158 left until halftime. Murdoch going to scramble out of the pocket, hit from behind, and He'll pick up a couple, but that's it as Craig Veasy knocks him down. That they'll spot it just across the 46. And now Texas wants a timeout with 143. 
showing until halftime. Well, that's a smart call by Murdoch to come over here and call timeout. His team is down. It's down considerably, 28-3, to but he has time to score and perhaps get back in this football game. They need that positive note to go in before half. Murdoch talking with John Mize, the offensive uh, coordinator on the near sideline. Here's something we'd like to remind you of that's uh, coming up. Dave Rose, all Southwest Conference team. It's going to be announced on the 19th, a couple of Saturdays from now, during that TCU Texas A&M game. And I can tell you, you don't have to be the best player to be on that team. You just got to show me something. <laughs> We've got a lot of candidates, so we've seen some just outstanding play. But what's that? Hey, wait a minute now. Uh, okay. Oh, he tricked me on that one. I thought it was snowing here in Austin. <laughs> Boy, a beautiful day in the hill country. Cloudless, high blue skies, temperature only supposed to reach about 80 degrees today. Jackson creeping up with the line of scrimmage, and he is coming on the blitz. Murdoch puts it up, going for Tony Jones, and it is intercepted by the Houston Cougars, and that is Cornelius Price, who took it away from him on a fine defensive play, and the Cougars stop the drive. If you want to play cornerback, Ron, you have got to play one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Price plays this as well as you can play it. He's running stride for stride. There's no one to help him, and he just catches that ball on the edge of his fingertips. For Price, that's an excellent play. He's playing one-on-one. -on -one. You see no one out here? He's all by himself. The ball just happened to come down to him. Jones had inside position on him. The ball just a tad overthrown, and Price took it right away from him. So the Cougars now with 136 showing until halftime and already leading 28 to 3, get the football back. I don't know the Cougars know how to run out the clock, so they may they may try to score again. I don't think that play is in their their offensive book. Double pass to Dixon. Gets by one tackler. Stanley Richard will push him out of bounds. And Stanley Richard pushed him down a little bit late. No flag has come into the fray. Little frustration on Richard's part there. Well, now, if you're a defensive player like me, you say, well, he just helped them down. <laughs> but he helped them down in a hurry. You want to play with aggression. That's the way we used to play football. Just foam at the mouth and get ready. Right, Ron? <laughs> 90 seconds showing on the stadium clock as Ware walks around making sure that everybody gets the call. Zings it in the flat, incomplete, looking for Dixon. If Ware has time to look up on that play, he Kevin had, Mason, yeah, like you saw what I saw. Out practice. You saw what I saw. Kevin Mason did the old down and out and up. He came down on the play and made an out move, and the cornerback bit on it, and then he turned it up, and ouch. They make say to Ware, run that same play and look up for Kevin Mason. them now they're in almost scoring position they're near midfield where on first down over the middle ball is tipped goes incomplete Dixon was the man they were looking for over the middle Lee Brockman I believe out of Hereford Texas is the one who got a hand up and, and tipped it good hand there by Brockman now what you want to do is everybody reacts quickly to the football also, you don't want to be a receiver over the middle because it means all pass interference is off. <laughs> and you can right. get your head taken right off. You can get the free shots. Get out of bounds. 
phases with that. We're under one minute to play. As Stanley Richard, from his safety position, comes over to make the tackle. Boy, there's our lethal weapons. Look at Weatherspoon averaging 11 yards per carry in this game. That's up from his paltry little 8.9 coming into the game. And the Houston Cougars want a timeout to stop the clock since he did not get out of bounds. They have a third down situation at 46 seconds left until halftime. like to remind you the Arkansas Razorbacks will be the host team in the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. If you'd like ticket information for the January 2nd 1989 game, call area code 214-638-2695 Monday through Friday. And as of yesterday, Dave Rowe, this game was just about a sellout. Great job by Jim Brock, Rick Baker, Mike Justice, and all of the folks at the Mobile Cotton Bowl. Well, there have been some great teams mentioned as that matchup with Arkansas being the host team. There have been a lot of teams that have been mentioned, and they've been right up there in the national standings. 28 to 3, our score with 46 seconds in this second period. Two ball clubs that throw it as much as these. And uh, coming in, we thought we were looking at probably a four hour ball game, but I don't think we're going to be too far off on that day. Uh, I don't think we'll be disappointed. Now, what Texas wants to do here, Ron, is they don't want to get burned and try and stop this short third down. They don't want to have that, that fly pattern for a touchdown. That's what they have to guard against. They're already decided they're going to go and man the coverage and try to stop that third down play. That's Phillips who resets in the lower part of your screen. Where? Looking for the fly pattern. Dumps it off. Phillips at the 42. Trying to get out of bounds. And cut from behind, and he will to stop the clock at 37 seconds. And he is down to the 31-yard line as Garza comes over to make the stop. And I, I thought I saw Stanley Richards slip down on the play. There he was. He was in the back there, slipped down on the play. He had uh, Phillips on that play all the way. Perhaps we can see him again slip down here when he makes the cut back inside, stops and comes back. There's the cover. Stanley Richards just stops and just slid on the turf. Then Phillips does a smart thing to get out of bounds and stop that clock. Houston Cougars looking for another seven points as they're up by 25, and they have it first down at the Longhorn 31. inside the 25 to the 24. Boy, if Bierman doesn't catch him on that play, he goes for a score. Bierman on laying flat on the ground, reached up and grabbed his ankles. Nice play by Paul Bierman, 22. You'll see it. it's a throwback. Now he picks up the screen wall right there. Now watch Bierman, 22 over here. Just reaches up and grabs the foot in there to bring him down. So 24 ticks left on the clock. The Cougars have called the timeout. We'll hold it right here. That was Lee Brockman also who was uh, coming in from the inside trying to close off and reached up and grabbed an ankle. Well, that was very close to breaking in on that one also. The Cougars have a second down. Need about four. And of course, the clock becomes such a huge factor here. But Houston, you know, they, you can no, run. Not. That's, right. That's, <laughs> That's a ridiculous statement. It's, it's never a factor, I think, with these guys. I think you're right. And David McWilliams knows that he says, he looks up there and sees 24 seconds and says, gosh, that's two running plays for most teams, or it's six passes for Houston. <laughs> Jason Phillips with that last reception has just broken the conference record. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. He needed that to surpass Holder. Pass is incomplete. Dixon, the intended receiver at the 10-yard line. Stanley Richard was the man who came over the top to knock it down. Emmanuel Tolbert was the old record holder out of Southern Methodist. And there he is, Jason Phillips. I can tell you that's elite company. 172 receptions. That's elite in any conference, let alone the Southwest Conference. You know, Dave, two weeks in a row that we've seen conference records go by the boards that have been decently long-standing. I think Tolbert's was back in 1977, but that still was, was very high, particularly for what had been a running conference. Right beside him at the one yard line and with 
14 seconds left to play in this opening half. It is 34 to 3 as the Cougars have scored two touchdowns in the last two and a half minutes. Well, we talked about 25 seconds being on the clock and how with Houston, that's a long time. They score with 14 seconds left. That shows you how quickly they can score. They can hit from any part on the field. If they get man-on-man -man coverage, you have to give up something to play man-on-man -man coverage to get that blitz, and that's what you give up. You give up the long pass if he gets time. Again, you'll see Phillips going to the corner. See how quickly the quarterback sets up? Acceleration, speed, that's the name of the game. Not bad coverage. And that Beerman is right with him. He's running step for step, but Phillips, so watch him here. Come off the line, makes a little in-fake, and back out to the corner. And just a very well-thrown football. And Phillips, he's been in that end zone enough. He knows what to do with that football. 35-3 to the score with 14 seconds left. Phillips now seven receptions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. What do we got on Ware today? Ware already has thrown 30 passes, Dave, for 204 yards and four touchdowns. And he had at least five or six drop passes in that first one. They had seemed like they had the jitters and were playing dropsy that first quarter, but they have gotten that confidence back in their offense, Ron, and they're running it just like a well-tuned violin. Only a minute, 22 seconds on that drive. Nine plays, and it all started back at the eight-yard line. And a gentleman by the name of Weatherspoon is the one who set it up to bring it in a good field position at midfield as the ball blows off the tee. He's going to come in and put a finger on it. Well, Ron, I think the wind has picked up a little bit. Those flags are, are blowing. You can see the shirt blowing on Perry there. The wind is getting a lot more active. As you said, it was going to increase as the game went on. Here comes Adams with a kickoff. 14 seconds left in this first half. This one's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Longhorns will take it over at the 20-yard line. Crowd expected today between 68 and 70,000 people with tickets that were sold. And for the most part, they are sitting in silence as the Houston Cougar offense has silenced that. And I shouldn't leave out the defense with the job that they have done. Yeah, a lot of stuff. This Houston defense has been very much overshadowed by a great offense. Everybody talks about Phillips, Dixon, Andre Ware, the great scoring, but, but they have a good defense, just an excellent defense. was knocked out after the play was dead as Keith Jenkins makes the stop and mercifully the clock shows double zeros it is halftime with our score Houston 35 and Texas 3 is underway in the second half. Now this is going to come down to Dixon. Fumbles the ball. Will go down on one knee. And a touchback has been called. So the Cougars will scrimmage for their own 20-yard line opening the second half. And let's look and see who is it going to be at quarterback. Once again, number 11. Andre Ware, the sophomore out of Dickinson, Texas. Checking down on the field, we see Phillips, Dixon, Brian Williams, same group of receivers that opened the afternoon for the University of Houston on offense. Defensively, it appears to be the same group that opened for the University of Texas, with the exception of Bubba Jacks, who was at left cornerback.
Take a look at it. Watch how Ware gets collapsed on as the blitz coming from the outside. There's the, there's the interception going down the sideline. That's Bubba Jackson was just standing there. That's what you have to do. I was going to call that blitz up on the line because there were eight guys, almost nine guys, up on the line of scrimmage. And that's what David McWilliams said they had to do. They had to blitz him. They had to get pressure on him. And, boy, they can uh, quick. If you're eight seconds into the second half and you're sitting on the five-yard line, wow. Power eye set to the right. Pitch goes to Metcalf. Turns the corner, and he will score. A marker is down on the near side of the field. They are going to call illegal procedure against the University of Texas. Good heavens. Or oh, when it rains, it pours. Well, particularly that call procedure. <laughs> well, it was all the way across the field. The far sideline judge threw the flag. What might have been, Ron, might have been. I'm just speculating when I say this. Oh, they're calling. Is that an ineligible? Well, it can't be an ineligible. Wait a minute. Or six men at the line of scrimmage. That's what we get his call. I think they may not have had enough men on the line of scrimmage. But in a power, in a power I set, you got two tight ends. So I think we could eliminate that. Discussion continues. I think he called illegal participation. I believe that's what the call was. Now that is, that's a 15-yard penalty. Wait a minute. Oh boy, that'll make a quarterback's stomach just grind like there is no tomorrow. And it'll make a coach's stomach grind like there's no tomorrow. I believe that's what he called, Ron, illegal participation. 12 men on the field, obviously. First down for the 20-yard line. Murdoch drills the pass incomplete. Looking for Keith Cash on a post route. As Price was the cover man. Ron, I just got word, I believe, that a lineman may have come in as a tight end and not reported. I think that may be the call. Someone just mentioned that. That to me, so that may be the illegal participation. And the lay is out of the sideline. We'll try to get a clarification. Pass over from looking for Tony Jones. And that's going to bring up a third down situation. David Palmer of Orange, Texas, report to the stadium office. Third down for the Longhorns from the 19-yard line. Metcalf in motion to the open side of the field. Murdoch intercepted by Johnny Jackson up the far sideline, and he's got one man to beat. Caught from behind and tackled at the 48 yard line. I was just going to say this is the best move I've seen Murdoch under pressure move out of the pocket, set back up, find his wide receiver, but Jackson, that's why a lot of people throw away from Jackson. He returned three last year, he's got two today, but he has a great. Key, uh, he has great keys on the quarterback. He steps right in front of the wide receiver, catches the ball in stride, and turns what could have been a touchdown right around, and now it's Houston's ball at midfield. Six turnovers on the day for the Texas Longhorns. Two interceptions now by Jackson. Ware stumbles, loses the football, and Texas has recovered. with the fumble recovery. Ware just never
never seemed to have the handle on that football. It just slipped out of his hands from the center exchange. David, I could challenge this as a conference record. That's three turnovers in 35 seconds. <laughs> I think you may be right. There's the turnover situation. Six for Texas, three for Houston. That's, a, that's enough turnovers for a season, nine turnovers. Pitch to Metcalf. Metcalf looks for some place to run and is belted out of bounds hard at the 40-yard line. Darren Warren, one of the first men to get there along with Callaway for the quarterback spot. Metcalf turns a run that's going nowhere into a gainer. The illegal participation thing, we got clarification from the liaison down on the sideline. And it was a, a lineman who lined up a tight end and did not report. That's the reason for the penalty. Of course, that's the ineligible number at tight end, which would be he would have to report because he would be eligible to go downfield for a pass. the 36. Also, Kevin Tuggle, number 27, coming up to put the stopper on him. That's going to be close to a first down. In fact, now, Ron, they are signaling first down. Metcalf today as the Cougars have shadowed him and shadowed him well. 20 attempts, 73 yards. 35 to 3 are scored. Houston leads. for Nelson down at the 15 yard line. Jackson again on the coverage. A lot of pressure on Murdoch that time. They're really teeing off and getting to him, but Murdoch's pretty cool in there. He stays under pressure. Right here you see as soon as he lets go the ball, there's a hit from that side. There's another one right in his face. And that was just barely missed by Kevin Nelson, the wide receiver. T. Jenkins, number 64, already has two sacks in the ball game today. The senior out of New Orleans done a really good job for the Cougar defense. Look at him coming up to the line of scrimmage. Is it blitz? Yes, it is. Flags all over the place. As Houston had gone to man coverage in the secondary, and they were coming with the blitz. That one looked like the old one where you uh, just missed the snap count if you're the center. Everybody went on one, and the center said, I'm going to snap it on two. Murdoch has now missed his last six pass attempts, Dave. Well, I can tell you from a defensive standpoint, this is what defensive linemen love. You tee off, you just go in there, you don't worry about a run. Puts a lot more pressure on the offensive line and a lot more pressure on the quarterback. Second and 15 for the 41. Metcalf on the deep draw. Tries to get outside on the right, squirm the pass to couple, he'll bring it down to the 35. Jackson, one of the first men there, along with Glenn Montgomery. What a week that young man had last week. 156 yards rushing in that Texas Tech game. Eric Metcalf was Mr. Everything last week, but this week he's attracting so much attention, he just can't get free. Third down and nine. Tackled and the play will be whistled dead at the 45 yard line as Darren Warren was coming from the backside, and you can see on his replay. Also, Keith Jenkins was in the vicinity. Murdoch doesn't even see the backside pressure. You'll see it from the right of your screen. There's Warren, 97. And they just bury him on that play. Landers, the deep man for the Houston Cougars on the return team as Bobby Liljadol waits for the snap at the 40-yard line. Off the side of his foot as he was trying for a pooch kick, and it's going to come out of bounds way upfield at around the 22-yard line. Now that they're going to push him back to the 19. So we're going to take a break. 12 minutes, 21 seconds left to play third period. It's Houston 35 and Texas 3. We'll be right back. Cougars back in offense, and they finally spotted the punt at around the 19-yard line. 
12.21 to play, third period. Outside linebacking position. Apple Roundup. We got one score to let you know about. Georgia winning big over Florida, 26 to three. That one is final. Well, I'm sure if you're a Texas fan, the first thing you say is, "How come they didn't do that in the first half? Why didn't they blitz that strong?" A lot of things have changed. The lead has changed. Of course, you can take a little bit more chance, but you've got to put pressure on Andre Ware. You can't allow him to get those receivers one-on-one -on -one downfield 15, 20 yards. Ware under pressure, and it's Wayne Duncan again who will sack it. Loss of nine on the play. You'll see Duncan just burst up the middle. He comes on the inside. He's an outside linebacker, and all of a sudden just comes up inside the line, the tackle. They use the uh, uh, Craig Vesey go outside. Excuse me, that's not Craig Vesey. That's Oscar Giles they use outside. But Dwayne Duncan blitz up inside, get that pressure. And now they are disrupting the quarterback. Brian Williams is the man to the bottom of your screen. Paul Smith at the top as the Cougars with every offensive set spread out all over the field. Throwback screen over the middle. Kim Belander breaks a tackle 15 at the 20 and then is knocked down by Mark Berry who comes up and takes his ankles out from under him. Good gain of the play but it'll still leave about 10 yards for the first down and the Cougars will have to punt. Houston throws to so many people, it's almost like you think there are not enough defensive folks to cover what they try to do and not try to do what they do very successfully. of that <laughs> and it's going to be blown dead just across the 41 it's a 38 yard kick here's the remaining schedule on recount next week will be in fort worth at amon carter texas against tcu the horn frogs of the 19th travel to college station to take on the aggies and then the season will be com completed with rice against houston that one at the astrodome and down that 19th is when I pick my all Southwest Conference team. Again, you don't have to be great, but it helps. <laughs> I think we've got a lot of candidates here today, don't we, Deron? Yeah, that's for sure. Murdoch over the middle to Metcalf. Down to the 50-yard line. And Dave right there is a good example. And, of course, the Cougars at time in a zone defense, but there were three red headgears the minute he caught the ball. You can have a big S on your chest, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's three to one odds are not good. Well, this one thing that Jack Barty had to do when he got to Houston, he had to get some semblance of offense and defense. The offense came very quickly. They started to gel with the last three or four games of last season. But I think the big surprise for Houston is how well their defense has played. Uh, you look at their down linemen, and they have played as well as any down linemen in the Southwest Conference. That gap of the pitch. Tries to turn the corner, can't get it done. It's no gain, and it's going to be a third down. Ron, I can't remember the last time I saw a defensive lineman like Alfred Oglesby leading the team in tackles. And that's a, that's a down lineman. That's a good point. Lathan right there helping out of the stop along with uh, Burnett. Both of them have had really good ball games today also. But you're right, Oglesby, of course, that Arkansas game vaulted him way up there when he had 20-plus tackles against the Razorbacks. Certainly did, but they're, they're down linebacker, Jenkins. I thought Montgomery has played as well as anybody up in that front line. And VZ getting that outside pressure. Quick out pass, thrown complete. Johnny Walker wrapped up immediately by Jackson. He will have the first down. Boy, this is, this is a dangerous pass when you have fast cornerbacks. It's a long pass for three yards. It's a quick out pattern. You can see it's coming just right in your, cam uh, your camera there, but Jackson makes a nice catch. Virtually that same pattern is what Jackson came up with one of his touchdown returns last year against Texas. 
And the point that you make is one that where a defensive back plays is important, but his closing speed is what you got to understand. That's what everybody says. And Jackson is, is so very quick. Metcalf loses the ball. Had a convoy in front, but I'll tell you what, it was broken down when Johnny Walker lost his block and Callaway came up and made the tackle. And Metcalf shaking up a little bit. He is. He's going to try to get to the outside. top of the screen. You see, the blockers in front are in good shape. But out here, Johnny Walker just lost his block, and Callaway comes up, takes him down. Well, you saw how quickly the football got out of there. But the flag is going to negate all that play because it was against Houston. So the penalty, as Dave said, face masking, taking it down to the 38-yard line. And it is going to be a first down at five. Paid attendance today, 69,600. Jackson showing blitz, and here he comes. Gave us to Metcalf. Breaks it on the right side at the 26-yard line. I think Alton Montgomery got a hand underneath on the tackle and injured himself as he went down immediately. Gain of 13 yards, and with Jackson on the blitz, that left that corridor open. Certainly did it. It was a right play for this blitz, because once you break through the line right there, once Metcalf's through there, he's got clear sailing. Now he tries to get outside. Watch Alton Montgomery come in here late and fall on that right arm. You can see how quickly he grabbed his right arm when he rolled on past the play. I want to remind our viewers that uh, David will be selecting the course player of the game at the conclusion of this contest, so stay with us on that. Alton Montgomery, the sophomore junior college transfer out of Griffin, Georgia, appears to be okay. They had just gotten a stinger on that armor on the shoulder. 35 to 3 with nine minutes to play in the third period. And Houston leading Texas. Draw play. Cockrell inside the 25, down to around the 24. The ball carrier. Oglesby again. They're going to say it's a gain of a couple. Montgomery got to the sideline. It's Alton Montgomery. Convinced the coaches he was okay. He's back out on the field. A lot of times when you're in a game like this and you know they're going to throw the football, if you're a defensive back, you don't want to get out of the football game because you know you're going to have a lot of opportunities to get interceptions and you know possibly look good on those films that come up Monday morning. Blitz coming outside left. Look in pass. Incomplete. As Murdoch had to deliver it in a heck of a hurry for Keith Cash. But he had real pressure from He's right. Ron, what those, what those wide receivers have got to do on that play to help Murdoch is when they see that blitz, when they see those cornerbacks running in there, they've got to cut that pattern. Instead of 9 to 12 yards, they've got to cut it off at about 5 to 7 quickly to help your quarterback out. You've got to have some escape for him to find. And right now, every time he throws the football, his seat is on the ground. He does not get to see a completion or a, or a uh, missed from the pass. Third down and eight. Murdoch dumps it off of the screen. Cockrell at the 15, at the 10. It's going to be a first and goal. Texas inside the 10. Alton Montgomery made the tackle. You'll see this pass goes underneath. There's Cockrell right there in your screen. 33. Just a little slip screen. Good call by Murdoch. This will avoid the pressure. What this does is it gives you that little quick outlet so you can avoid that pressure, get rid of the ball, and not take a shot. Ball is struck down just outside the six-yard line. This is the way the second half started. So Texas getting the football back, and then they turned it over. Blitz again. Pitch to Metcalf. Left side, and he's run out of bounds at the five-yard line. Darren Warren is the man who caused the play to go outside and out of bounds. Also, Oglesby was over there as Charles Cephas was trying to block it. He just simply couldn't handle his man. Well, it's tough on that play because he's got containment. He comes up and he forces the running back deep, and you've got to go around that man before you can get upfield. That's a tough play for a running back to make, and he still made one or two yards on the play. Williams do at halftime, and what would he say? You 
can't change your game plan drastically. You have to go out and try to control the football. They blitzed and put pressure on Houston. They've just driven the field and, and made a nice drive. And this is for respectability. Now you're trying to get back in the football game. Now, if you can stop Houston again, there's no telling what might happen. There's a lot of time left. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left, or 728 in this third quarter, Ron. Play coming in for the bench, and with the margin at 35 to 9, the Longhorns will go for two. Now, would you call me the optimist? <laughs> Alpha Montgomery showing blitz to the outside. Here he comes. Scrambling, throws the ball, incomplete. Nobody home. And take another look at the touchdown as the two point conversion goes awry, and Mark Murdoch just had to throw it away. If you can get the split up in the middle here, and you see the split up in the middle, Dwayne Miller with a really good block on Oglesby, driving him out of the hole. So it's 35 to 9, and we're going to take a break. Seven minutes, 38 seconds left in this third period. We'll be right back. 35 to 9, our score. Just about the midpoint of the third period. And again, Wayne Clemens having to use the aid of a holder as did Adams for the University of Houston every time they have tried to kick with the win. This is Dixon, four yards deep, wants to come out. His teammate says, uh-uh, let's go down on one knee. Paul Smith giving directions on the play. 48 yards, three minutes, 10 seconds. Cockrell on the six-yard touchdown, his second of the year. Now, that's what you normally see a nine-play drive, three minutes or so. Not, not 40, 30, 40 seconds. But I'm surprised that uh, Houston has not responded better to block that pressure and change their offense scheme a little bit to get that pressure off of Ware and to dump that ball off a little quicker because Texas has blitzed in four or five times in the last two series. They have blitzed, dunked him right up through the middle and put a lot of pressure on him. Texas again with seven men at the line of scrimmage. Four of them in that up position, as you can see. Ware throws the ball, tipped, and complete and it's Warren Bolden who got a hand up and tipped the pass just as it was thrown. Apple Roundup, here are some other scores we update you on. Notre Dame, that one's now final. They won over Rice by 43. West Virginia now having their own way against Cincinnati. And Auburn 31 to nothing over Southern Mississippi at half. Nebraska 31 to nothing over Iowa at half. Arkansas leading over Baylor by 16 and Alabama is forged in front 12 to nothing over LSU. the tackle inside the 25-yard line. Every time Texas, as we'll watch it again, has come up in a blitz situation, this is what the Cougars have countered with. And you see Patton on the ground, Hager on the ground, and a big, long opening for Weatherspoon. 59 yards on this carry, Dave. Everybody says you can. he's got a nine-yard average coming into this football game. You say you can't do that. But he's running better than nine yards per carry now. But it's all set up. Well, how about 16 and a half yards per carry? But it's all set up, Ron, by the blitz action. Pass thrown into the middle on the shovel pass to Anders incomplete. You know, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first first down for the Cougars of the second half, though, isn't it? And it's a 59-yard play that they do it on. Well, of course, when you blitz, what happens is you take the middle linebacker out of the play. You bring him up on the line. And if you break and get a seam, he jumps automatically into the secondary as we look at the Apple roundup here. a and and Louisiana Tech just getting started. Tech leading TCU 3-0. That one in the first period. Our score, 35-9. to Houston leading 7-10 to play third period. on where drills the ball touchdown Phillips where put it on the down and he was under pressure being sandwiched and still got it away perfectly 
Well, this one will go down as a touchdown, but where, as you said, Ron, completely just out of balance, just falling back on his back foot. No, no form passing on that play. Under a lot of pressure by the Texas uh, defensive line to put pressure on him, and he just threw that ball up and let Phillips run underneath it. His third touchdown today. Eight receptions, 127 yards as Roman Anderson tries to add the 42nd point for the Cougars. His kick is perfect. Here's a replay, and watch the pressure that quarterback Andre Ware is under. Now, every quarterback likes to step forward, but watch this. You'll see he's backing up. That's all arms. He has no feet up in the air, just kind of a, just a, a desperation pass, but just catches Phillips just right, right in the just perfect. You can't do it any better than that. So we'll take a break with 7.05 to play third period, and the Cougars, 42-9. We'll be right back. Cougars by that margin right there. Huh? Where now? You got some numbers yeah. for me? Where? Five touchdown passes. We're running out of paper on Andre Ware. But he's 13, excuse me, no, he's 14 of 36, 236 yards, five touchdown passes. And we still have a half of the third quarter left. And all the fourth quarter. Andre Ware, and he's only a sophomore. He's out of Dickinson, Texas. Here's Adams with the kick. Boy, that wind is really holding this one up. Catch made by Kerry Cash. Comes out across the 35 to the 36. Take a look at the scoring drive and to accentuate what we talked about at halftime. Cougars needed only 33 seconds in four plays on that one. Well, if the Cougars are doing one thing wrong, it's ball control. They just have not been able to run the clock down. <laughs> but when you talk about their long drive being two and a half minutes, that's just that's just quite a display. I mean, they can hit from any place on the field. They can score, and they just run the ball, no huddle, just no clock, just up they go, up and down the field. tries to get outside on the right. Going to wind up picking up a couple of very tough yards. As you see, Ellison coming up from that free safety position. Also, Keith Jenkins was out there. Oh, and that's a good play by a defensive lineman. I can tell you when they watch the films on Monday, the first thing they look for is they look for those defensive linemen that are able to run that 18 to 20 yards out and stay in front of that ball player, that ball carrier, and make that tackle. And that's what they, that's the type of player that Keith Last Jenkins is. is the 38. Double slot formation this time for the Longhorns. Up, going to go long for Tony Jones and incomplete. Dump checking at the 32, Kevin Nelson. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Callaway is the man trying to cover on the play. Murdoch made the pump and then trying to get the cornerback to bite on that one through the up. And that stops the clock with 6.14 to play in this third period. Shasta smiling. <laughs> that was a smile? <laughs> I think she's saying, don't mess with our Cougars. Third down for Texas. Backside pressure again as the marker goes down. Pass thrown incomplete. Tony Jones, the intended receiver. Darren Warren was applying pressure and offensive holding, I feel sure, from where that one was thrown. But the Cougars won't have to take it because that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Well, you don't stand too close to the coach when you're down like this, do you? He just kind of wanders around by himself out there. There they're talking, of course, over the option there with Keith Jenkins. They accept the penalty. It'll be back inside the 30 if they take if they decline it. It'll be fourth down. I think they should decline it on this and take the punt. Bobby Lil Judal comes on to punt for the Longhorns. Averaging over 45 per boot. In fact, his first two kicks today were 60 and 62. This one off the side of his foot again. He wasn't even trying to boot kick this one. And 
that ball is going to be marked down. Let's see, they're still walking forward at the 37, at the 38, and they, that's where they have marked it, around the 39-yard line. What is that about sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't? And I don't think anything has gone right for Texas today, has it? No, it certainly hasn't. This, is, this game has just really turned against them. Every break that's it's happening is going in Houston's favor. They 23 yards on that kick. So the Cougars get the ball rather than in poor field position. It loads it off punting with the wind. They're going to get it in very good field position, almost the 40-yard line. Ball boy. Throwback screen, complete at the 35, breaking it is Dixon at midfield, inside the 40, and he's down to the Texas 39-yard line. And Ron, I know there are fans out there saying, well, Ware's got five touchdown passes. What can possibly be the record? The record is six touchdowns by Gary Kubiak, so he's got a good shot at that still. Kubiak, of course, of Texas A&M, played at St. Pius High School down in Houston, and that came against the Rice Owls. That was in 1981. Where? Over the middle, drills it wide open inside the 25. Still on his feet, and it's another first down for the Houston Cougars as Patrick Cooper, the sophomore out of Dallas, on the receiving end of that one. See Ware here, of course, nice pocket pass, finds his man. He doesn't have to run on that one as far as running out of the pocket. But hurry up offense, they're right back over the ball. That's what happens. They, they get so much, so quick. They get so many different plays. It's just amazing the number of plays that they can run. Ware drills it complete to Cooper. Beerman is right there to make the stop. And that's going to be, I think, a gain of one. Nope, no game. They're going to put it back down at the 20. Beerman comes up. Bubba Jacks goes into the secondary for Texas. Under five minutes to play in the third period. Looking for Phillips over the middle, and it's knocked away by Mark Berry. Jackson Phillips with a conversation after that play was over. Well, Phillips was running a crossing pattern, and Jax came back and hit him. You can see this. Now watch the tail end of this. See the ball there. Now watch Jax. He just kind of gave a shot. Phillips gave a little shot back. He just kind of had a few words there. That's not going to hurt anything. Neither one of them are about over 160, 170 pounds. <laughs> it's a lightweight fight. They're down to 10 for the Texas 20. 42 to 9. Cougars leading the Longhorns. Where for the end zone, looking for Phillips again, overthrown. So with that, Roman Anderson will come on to attempt a field goal. This one should be from in the vicinity of 37 yards with the line of scrimmage at the 20. Of the Houston run and shoot offense has any any misgivings or any faults, it's that when it gets inside the 20-yard line, it usually bogs down. Now, a lot of people liken that to the uh, the old street yard type of play, you know, where you go here, you go there. But everybody on that offense has a set pattern. They all know where they're going. Anderson, 37-yard attempt. Ball is down. Line drive is good. Anderson from 37 yards. 45 to 9. The Houston Cougars going on top, and we're going to break away for a moment. Four minutes, 36 seconds left in the third period. We'll be right back. Travel arranged to Eastern Airlines, serving Houston's business travelers with nonstop service to Atlanta from convenient Hobby Airport. Eastern, we've got your ticket to the heart of the South. Travel arranged through the new NFL Citibank Visa card. Now carry the card of your favorite team and earn free NFL gear just for using it. Call 1-800-NFL-VISA today. 
we are back. Ron Franklin along with Dave Rowe. Unbelievably, this ball game is three hours old, and we still have 4.36 to play. Folks not in the ball game in the third period. <laughs> I know there's a, a seven-run rule in some softball uh, circles. I wonder if there's a seven-touchdown rule in others. Kerry Cash out over the 40, close to the 45. Number 19, Kerry Cash. That shows you how hungry the fans are here. They want to. They're, they're standing up there excited about a run by Kerry Cash over 10 yards because it really has been complete dominance by by Houston offensively. Ron, I want to make one point quickly, and that is that some people may th may think that that was running up the score. What what Jack Pardee did right now, no way. But what do you do if you go for it and you make it? Then it's uh, then it's even worse. Then it even looks worse on you. I think that's a very sportsmanlike thing to do. He doesn't want to lose though his offensive edge because he's got a big game next week, too. Pass batted at the line of scrimmage. I think Keith Jenkins is the man who got a hand on it. And right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. You're watching 20 Vision, KTX HTV, Houston. 45 to 9, that's the count with the Cougars on top. scrimmage. No gain on the play. Hooper in the ball game. Trey, a sophomore out of Mineral Wells. One of the first men to come across and make the hit, and now it's going to be a third down situation. Also, Callaway coming up from his quarterback spot. is on in the middle, going to go long, looking for Tony Jones, and no marker, incomplete. Ooh, I, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'd like to take another look at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we can look down the sideline there. Well, see, now that's what I saw. Now, maybe they ruled the ball was uncatchable, but catchable, but defensive holding, I guess, is what Tony was pleading for. deep into the end zone. 55 yards. Did you take a look at some of the Houston Cougars on the sideline? <laughs> I heard Mineral Wells. Yeah, that's, that's Trey Hooper, the sophomore from Mineral Wells. Take a look at the remaining schedule for the Houston Cougars next week, the Wyoming Cowboys. Then on the 19th, out on the South Plains, you get Texas Tech, and then they wrap it up against Rice. That game is in the Astrodome. So two at home and one on the road for the Houston Cougars. back to the open side of the field. The 66 even is what he yelled on the line. He's got an interesting stat here as we watch Phillips take this ball out of bounds. All the points that Houston has scored today have taken 7 minutes and 16 seconds. That's incredible. Their longest drive has been 2 minutes and 36 seconds. So that tells you how fast and how quickly they move the ball downfield. I know they don't keep that stat, but you would have to think that with 45 points on the board, that... <laughs> You've had that, that's, all day. An, that's an incredible average. Weatherspoon breaks it open, and there's nobody in front of him at the 30, at the 20. Cuts back at the 10, and he will score. <laughs> 60 yards of the touchdown run. 
down and for Weatherspoon, 10 carries for 209 yards, I believe. Isn't that right? That is correct. <laughs> well, that's a good average, 20.9 yards. Once you blitz, we talked about it earlier when he broke that other one up the line. If you break that seam in the middle, in other words, you block him out, and you get that little seam, and the running back sees that he skirts up into it, and you call it the minute it happened, Ron, you see there at the 209 yards. The minute it happens, you're in the secondary, and there's no one to bring you down. You have no linebackers because they're up on the line blitzing. Extra point attempt is good by Anderson. Here's another look at it as Houston was spread out all over the field, and there's, there's nothing left in the middle. See how quickly they get the seam. Now, right now, when he breaks that tackle, he's gone right now. There's no one in front of him. He's just got a clear run. He sets up the cornerback right here. He thinks somebody's coming from the backside, but he sets up the cornerback, cuts back into the corner. That's a tired young man. Ten runs, 209 yards. Again, watch the seam open up right in the middle. Breaks that tackle. Now he's gone. There's nobody even near. You can see the 40-yard line. There's the 30 to 20, and he's just chalking up yardage. That's where he hails from. Only a sophomore at 5'8", 210 pounds. I asked Jack Party about him yesterday, and he said, Ron, it's one of those things where every time you saw him on the practice field, he smiles no matter what happens. And he said, on the team that we had him on, we couldn't tackle him. And we decided that if, he said, if we couldn't tackle him, maybe the opposition couldn't tackle him. I think, I think they're right. Deion Cockrell at the 20. 35 and out to the 40-yard line for Cockrell. And Ron, to give you a comparison of his dominance, he has 209 yards rushing. The entire Texas offense has 204 yards. Houston with a total. Here you see Weatherspoon. Last two carries, 119 yards and a touchdown. up to make the initial contact. And I can tell you that Houston's offensive line coach, Bob Young, is excited. I saw him coming off the field. I played against him for many years, and he just still looks like he can play. He's a little bit heavier, as we all kind of settle in, but he's got to be excited about this offensive line and his breaking those lines. That's the old lineman's dream, to have those big, long runs. Murdoch under pressure, and he sacked and I think it's Hooper again it is because Jenkins 64 standing by him it's a loss of five and Trey Hooper getting the sack with two minutes 45 seconds of the third period the Cougars with 52 points to show so far 52 to 9 Metcalf gets by one tackler tries to get outside gets by Jackson at the 45 and is finally going to be tackled at the 47 yard line Lamar Lathan and Callaway combining in the stop Metcalf looks as though he has injured that left ankle again. You may see this on the tail end. When he cuts back, his leg seems to slip a little bit. Right there, he gets stepped on. That's Lathan steps on that ankle. And he is. He's limping to the sideline. Jadal called on to punt again. He has been a busy young man this afternoon. Metcalf, 27 carries for 104 yards. Good look at Spanky Stevens and Eddie Day, the 
Spanky, of course, the longtime head trainer here at the University of Texas. wind up inside Newhouse Royal. <laughs> 53 yards in the punt by Lil Jadaw. I thought New quarterback yeah. in the ball game. David Dacus, senior out of Kingsville, Texas. And there you see his numbers. Now, usually he has been the starter this year and Ware has been the cleanup man, so to speak. But this time Dacus playing a different role. Mr. Ware ending with some pretty good statistics for a quarterback. We'll get to those final numbers on him in just a second. Throwback screen at Phillips. Hager is the man on top. James Patton is the one underneath. Numbers on wear on the day, 18 of 42 for 296 yards and five touchdowns, one interception. Vegas back over the middle, that's Dixon. Behind the block at the 30, 35, and driven out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Lee Brockman finally forced him out. Dickinson Gators is what he is saying. That's the high school he played for. Hi, Mom! Hi, Mom! <laughs> We're getting everybody in the sidelines now. You know, there's not a lot of drop-off when you turn around and have a David Dacus. 107 of 188, over 1,400 yards passing, 57% completions. He is not a backup quarterback. Dacus going to go long, and it is intercepted by Stanley Richard at the Texas 30-yard line. Brian Williams, the intended receiver. Stanley Richard comes now with the football. Good one-on-one -on -one coverage on the right of your screen. You'll see it. He throws it up on a fly pattern. Good. You see the wide receiver is out of bounds. He can't come back in and make that catch. Good concentration that play on that play. You know something I've always wondered about? I, I, no, I shouldn't even mention this. <laughs> After a player goes out of bounds, is he eligible to come back and try to play defensive back, as backs do if he's out of the play? He is not, is he? I mean, I, that had nothing to do with that play. Just wondering. I believe if Chris Samuels on the carry goes for five. I believe the, of course, the wide receiver. I was asking hypothetically oh, okay. because from time to time you see that kind of situation. I, I think a defensive player can go in out of bounds and come back in, but I, I know a wide the receiver cannot. Player can, offensive receiver cannot go out of bounds and come back in and catch a pass. If you did, you'd have him running down the sideline and just yeah. turn back in. Yeah, that, and that's that's my point. I know if he can't participate there, I just wonder if he can come back and break it up. Yeah. <laughs> and I reiterate, it had nothing to do with that play. I'm just wondering hypothetically what that situation would be. Samuels again brings it out to around the 40-yard line as Hooper is there to make the tackle. And that should be the final play of the third period, unless Texas hustles back to the line of scrimmage. Clock is going to stop momentarily as they move the chains. Metcalf down on the sideline, trying out that ankle. They had a great shot. Guys in the truck doing a good job in that replay to show you when the ankle got stepped on there, the reason that he had to limp off the field. And with that, the end of the third period. Now a marker is down. The question is, Ron, whether the clock threw him off sides or whether that's the end of the third quarter. No flag. That is the end of the third period. So let's take a break. 52-9, to nine, Houston leading over Texas. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. 
with the University of Houston leading the Texas Longhorns. <laughs> <laughs> a run and shoot. You think there'll be a lot of coaches copying that after this game or after this season? There's the total yards. It's just very, very hard to defense. I remember we did a game earlier, Ron, against Baylor, and Baylor went to three down linemen and tried to defense it with about eight defensive backs. They tried to do it that way, and they had a, they did very well, and then all of a sudden they got burned. Texas today decided that they were going to blitz, using those outside linebackers to try to put pressure on it, putting Britt Hager down on the line, trying to make him absorb one block, and all of a sudden they got burned by it. It's just a, it's a very devastating offense. It's just, it's just all predicated off of what your opponent does. Texas with a first down at their own 40-yard line. That's Samuels, I beg your pardon. Out across the 45 to around the 47. Lamar Lathan defensively making the stop for the Cougars. You know something, Dave? One other point, though, that needs to be made about their offense. I don't think anybody can take the run and shoot. I think you're talking about four exceptional people that make this offense go. I think you're talking about Weatherspoon, Phillips, Dixon, and Andre Ware, who have yeah. thrown the ball extremely well. I don't think you can just spread people out all over the field and say, this is going to be magic and it's going to work. Well, that's of course, and you have to you have to credit the offensive linemen, too, because it takes a different type of block styling. You're not the old run blockers where you just drive them off the line. You have to do pass blocks. You have to pick up. There's just a lot of things. You have to be very smart to play it because there's so many line adjustments as it takes place. You see Ware coming off the line. He's yelling this way. He's yelling that way. Well, the offensive linemen have to pick up that same count. They have to know what the play is. They have to react to it. Everything is different on their play, but you're right. It is starting with four outstanding athletes. On third down, Samuels right up the middle. Down to the 47-yard line for the first down. Hooper, to D is coming to the ball game, has done a very good job. He was credited with a tackle then also. Murdoch under heavy pressure intercepted at the 45. Can he stay in bounds? No. Alton Montgomery, you talk about breaking on the football. He came from, it looked like, 15 yards away and in a very short period of time. Now he's got the quarterback zeroed in right there. Look at it. He's already broken to the football. You're right, Ron. He read him right off the pass. Reading his eyes because Red Murdoch was staring down the tight end, Clark, who was the intended receiver. And it is Houston Cougar football at the 38-yard line. And that is a young freshman mistake, but that's a growing pain. You've got to give you've got to give credit to the defense, but that's a growing pain. That's where that quarterback zeroes in and locks in on the, on the wide receiver's intended receiver, and all of a sudden the defensive back reads it, steps right in front, and boom, now they're inside the 40-yard line. Dinkus, pass incomplete, and now the marker goes down. Let's go to the Apple Roundup here and check some other scores from around the country. Notre Dame, winning big over Rice, West Virginia over Cincinnati, Auburn 38 to nothing over Southern Mississippi. They're in the third period. Nebraska, of course, way out in front of Iowa State, 38-0 in the third. Arkansas, ahead of Baylor, 19-3 in the third. LSU trailing Alabama, 15-7 at half. That pass was to an ineligible receiver as we take a look. Uh, Louisiana Tech leading Texas A&M. Good heavens, 14-8 in the second period. And Tech and TCU all knotted up at 10 apiece. So that's a loss of down on the play. And with the penalty, it's second and 15. Williams there and it's knocked away. Brian Williams, the intended receiver at the five, and Mark Berry knocked it away. Seven turnovers, Texas, three fumbles, four interceptions, and for the Cougars, four turnovers, two fumbles, two interceptions. 
And that time, if Dacus had had a little stronger arm, Williams had broken behind his defensive back and was about five yards in the clear. The pass was not well thrown, even though it was thrown with the wind. Dacus signaling his wide receivers. the middle has it complete Dixon at the 35 and he'll run out of bounds <laughs> to stop the clock of all things at 1306 <laughs> to play in the ball game well, I think it was a little bit more as we watch him on this crossing pattern and I watch him just break open right there it's a hard catch it's low behind him but now what he's trying to do is trying to get around someone and just sees it has to get out of bounds I don't so think so much he was trying to uh, stop the clock fourth down and three now do you punt it or do you uh, go for I think you almost, well, if you're going to try to keep offensive continuity, you usually go for it in this situation. Weatherspoon is coming in the ball game. Boy, this will hurt his average if he gets to carry. <laughs> 21 yards to carry right now. Dacus going under center with five seconds, showing on that 25-second clock. Gives it off of the draw. Weatherspoon bounces off the tackler, has the first down, and he's inside the 25. seven or eight on that maybe nine Jay Jake was finally stopping but it's a first down to Houston Cougars as the chains have been reset the ball just on the 23 yard line record 12 touchdown receptions this season for Phillips well, when Phillips made that move to the corner the safety just bit on that inside move thinking he was going to come to the inside and he just broke it back outside perfect timing there by Dacus and we talked about Dacus not being really a backup quarterback he could probably start at most schools he is uh, he is that good a quarterback no no drop off with his talents at all for the two-point conversion. Bearden, I think, is the man who came with the two-point, and now will mark her down. It, it possibly, well, let's wait and see here. Illegal receiver downfield is what the call is going to be. The tricky thing about this is that he is a left-handed thrower. That's what really took me by surprise. You can see here, now he's running out to his left here. The watch, he just throws the ball downfield. You can see some of the offensive linemen going into the end zone, so they were downfield. Spillman got it away, and Bearden is at, yeah, Bearden is the one who came up with it, but with the penalty. score don't you <laughs> well now the extra point attempt by Roman Anderson will come from the 15 yard line Spillman again with a high pass handles it well and that is a spiral <laughs> the ball did not go through end over end Let's take another look at the touchdown Jason Phillips now again Dacus moves his pocket left now watch you got a little bit of pressure but look at the move that Phillips makes to the outside you see the the safety is back that's Richard back into the inside he thought he was going inside he makes that break it's over so we're going to break away for the action 59 to 9 to score we'll be right back there you see it we still have 1242 to play in the ball game by the way the 59 points is the most against Texas at Memorial Stadium ever with the kickoff. Texas 
will scrimmage from their own 20-yard line. I have a feeling what Jack Party is saying to, to John Jenkins' his offensive coordinators are probably trying to coordinate who will come in on the next offensive series. Well, once I would be surprised if we saw Dixon, Phillips, and those guys in there again, having scored 59 points. I think that would surprise me, too. I think that, you know, I had an old coach, Rip Angle, at Penn State, who said the football's like a giant wheel, and it slowly turns, and when your time is at the top, you make sure that you don't do dirty on the guys at the bottom because that wheel will turn, and someday they'll get their opportunity. Murdoch throws the pass in complete. Tony Jones, the intended receiver. things that David McWilliams made very clear this year is a number of young players that he had signed that he redshirted and he said they're not going to play under any circumstances there are five offensive linemen who are cruiserweight you might say <laughs> they go anywhere from 270 to 314 and he said you know we're going to be young and take our lumps at a time but in a couple of years we're not going to be fun Chris Samuels over the right side and we're on there to reiterate that point. That that takes confidence and that takes security in your job. Not to say that a 59 to 9 loss is anything that gives you job security, but he's got two freshmen back there. We highlighted that, and two sophomores in his secondary. He's got several. He's got a freshman quarterback. He's got, as you say, five freshman offensive linemen that are going to come back. So he's got a long range program, and you just don't want to sacrifice that for a quick five and four season or win two extra games. The running play, it's going to be enough for the first down. Lathan on the top of the stack. I am a little surprised that the Cougars still have their number one for the most part in there on defense. Another thing that a game like this does is it's, uh, you know, the old character builder. People use that as a cliche, but I can tell you for a fact, it'll put a taste in your mouth that you just don't want to. There's it. another youngster right there being redshirted, Jason Burleson, highly sought after quarterback out of Sherman, Texas. And, of course, is a youngster by the name of Peter Gardere who is being redshirted this year, quarterback from Houston Lee. Ellison coming up from his safety spot to hit Samuels. So it stops the clock with 11 minutes, 37 seconds left to play in the ball game. Second down for the Longhorns at Lighter Scrimmage. You can see there just across the 33. Samuels runs into his own blocker. Going to be hit behind the Lighter Scrimmage and knocked down his ball from his defensive end. A senior out of right here in Austin, Texas, is there to make the hit. And that's going to be a loss of six on the play. conversations of course with David McWilliams he said one of the things that he told me before the game he said I don't know if we can stop him he said we're going to, have to play awfully well he said we got a lot of young people that we're going to depend upon making awfully big plays today Houston's in their prime they're they're loaded with seniors and Texas is their years are still to come but they've got some good ones back there that, that Mike uh, Willie Mac guards that can play with anybody screen pass that's Cockrell 35 at the 40 to the 45-yard line. Latham gets off the bottom of the pile. Nice screen out here to Cockrell. Now watch when he plants and puts up those blockers. Again, Houston playing that more or less prevent defense. Richard uh, out Montgomery comes over and makes that tackle. But a good play, good solid play. Keep the pressure off the quarterback. This afternoon, four interceptions. Draw play. Samuel has 10, counted off the close to 15 as he goes inside the 40 yard line. Cornelius Price defensively making the stop. Here is the gentleman who is the heir apparent to that tailback position next year after Metcalf graduates, but there's another youngster, Adrian Walker, out of Tyler Chapel Hill, redshirted this year, who's not playing for Texas. Well, most coaches, like I say, they have a set plan, and they just don't want to jeopardize that set plan. Sometimes 
sometimes you have to make those quick changes, but a lot of times, and of course with the injuries that Texas has had this year, especially in their front line, gosh. Deion Cockrell goes to the right side. That's Trey Hooper, number 94. Trey has played extremely well since he's come to the ball game uh, back in the third period. You remember I mentioned during the Baylor game, this is a delightful youngster. As you take a look at Metcalf, but that does not look good with that ankle encased in ice. Uh, Trey, you remember I mentioned in the Baylor game, was a part of the All-Star game for the state of Texas a couple of years ago out of Mineral Wells. Remember I told you he was the one that had caught going through the, uh, the chow line twice, and he just got a big grin and said, it's not only my trademark, I just, I, I love to eat. <laughs> to the near side, Samuel gets whacked from behind. Trey Hooper again, one of the first men there. Latham also on the bottom of the pile. And on the other side, and Oglesby. And Ron, on the other side of the line with Houston, Houston's got a good shot at the bowl. They have, uh, they've got a good football team. I think they're probably the surprise team in the Southwest Conference. Well, the thing that they have that makes them so attractive to bowl people is the fact that they are so wide open and exciting. And bowl teams, or bowl people, are looking for that kind of situation. Samuels loses his footing. He will go down and lose almost five. Call it three as he went down at the 35. Well, Houston has got some tough ones as we watch this replay. Houston has got some tough ones coming up. Their next week's game is as big as you're going to play. Yep, that one right there could not only do a lot for Jack Pardee and his football team, but could do a lot for the Southwest Conference as far as national limits, don't you think? I certainly do. Fourth down, and of course, Texas down 59 to 9. They'll go for it. Gets his pass away, incomplete, overthrown, and now a marker comes down. And that is going to be pass interference. Calavay cutting in, in distance. And, and the crowd of the Texas <laughs> side is saying, <laughs> good timing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that ball was not catchable. <laughs> And that may, that may be what they're looking at to see if the ball was catchable. Perhaps we can see it here. You'll see the, over, the overthrow. There's pass defense interference, I should say. And watch as Murdoch. He just throws his ball up. But watch what Callaway comes back underneath. He bumps him right there. Yeah. So as they reset the chains, it's going to be a first and ten at the 24-yard line. Todd Smith is coming at offensive center for the Longhorns, a junior out of Richardson, Texas. Samuels breaks it open at the 20, at the 15, cuts behind a block at the 5, and he will score. That is a really good second effort by the youngster, Chris Samuels, out of San Antonio. One thing that he does very well, kind of reminded me of Metcalf on that. He's got different running style, but when he got out there and he got free, he set up his, deep, his, his wide receiver. He said, you get him, and I got it. And he pointed at him, and the receiver turned around, picked up the block, and that's what enabled him to get him for a score. But he really set up it very nice. And he's one of those sophomores that you're talking about, young players. Texas will go for two. looking for Kerry Cash, and it is incomplete. Here's a ground-level look. Give you a little better idea of what Dave's talking about on that last touchdown run by Chris Samuels. Well, there's a place during a run where you have to gather your composure, and that's what Samuels does on this play. He makes a nice cut back against the grain. Now, watch when he gets through here. Now, watch right in here. He sets him up. You get him, and he said, I can make it from there. And the receiver turns around makes a nice block, dives in the end zone. We will be right back. 
Ron Franklin and Dave Rowe here at Memorial Stadium in Austin. Eight minutes still remaining to be played in this ball game, and we have had a number of records that if you've just joined us, first of all, most points ever scored against Texas at Memorial Stadium. For the youngster, number 20, Jason Phillips, what an afternoon as he has broken the season touchdown reception record in the conference, and he also took over one that is very, very big, and of course that one is the one by Emmanuel Tolbert. Catches in a career. Dixon on the return comes across the 37-yard line. And Donald, if I'm leaving out any, please tell me. But I know those three are three of the biggest ones that have been as far as an individual and also a team record that we have had broken in today's ball game. And I'm going to need a sandwich if we stay up here much long. How about that one? Arkansas now way ahead of Baylor, 33-3 to in the fourth quarter, going to host the Mobile Cotton Bowl here in uh, Texas. That's what you call control. Dacus continues to operate at quarterback. Well, Dixon and Phillips are still in the ball game. This is Dixon with the ball. Gets outside of Brockman. Hit, turn to flip, loses the football, and it's been recovered by Texas at the 41-yard line. receivers in a game this late with this big of a score. Oh, and if you get them hurt, then, then you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I, I really wish I hadn't done that. And that's how you get them hurt when they make plays like that. It's, it's one thing in the heat of battle. It's a very good play. It's a good tackle. But this is where you get them hurt. Suppose he sprains an ankle on this play. And we real, we've talked about the importance of next week. I can promise you that the breath came out of Pardee on that play. Jack Pardee saying, oh, boy, just let him get out there. Samuels turns it up inside the 35. Checking his 33, Deion Cockrell rather than 23, Samuels. Darren Warren making the tackle for the Houston Cougars. Louisiana comes across to make the stop. Loss of three in the play. It's going to bring up a third down. And the horses are still in there, Ron. <laughs> I look down and see Glenn Montgomery, 56, and he's one of the horses. That young man plays football out there as well as any down lineman I've seen in the Southwest Conference. Overthrown, intended for Tony Jones down at the 21. So it is now fourth down for Texas. If they want to hold on to the football, they got to go just inside the 31 yard line of Houston. that Mark Murdoch has this week. Of course, last week he had just an exceptional game. 326 yards passing. He was 20 of 35. Murdoch for Clark incomplete. Putting his price, covering over a pass was overthrown. And the Cougar offense will come back on with six minutes and 29 seconds left to play in this one. You see a very dejected Mark Murdoch making his second start. Well, one thing that he has is a lot of freshman composure. It's surprising that as a freshman he has that much composure. Uh, he's been in some tight football games already as a, as a starter this year and under a lot of pressure. But he really keeps his composure when he's out there. Somehow Jason Phillips going out of the ball game. He had come out on the field, but Alexander has checked in at wide receiver, and now Dixon heading off the field also. So they get Phillips and Dixon out. Jet Brown is in, and that's him in motion coming behind the quarterback. Anders up the middle. 
crosses the 40 to the 44. Jay Jaquist writing him down at the 44. Jay Jaquist, number 91. You know, when you start talking about backups, I think that Weatherspoon, you would consider him a backup to Kimball Anders, wouldn't you, as uh, that's in that super back position. And he's got over 200 yards rushing today. So they've got, they really, this is their year if they're going to do it. They have uh, just an outstanding at people at the skill positions. Phillips comes back into the ball game. He's one of the three wide receivers down at the bottom of your screen, but it's Anders on the carry. Has the first down and had about five or six more to it. Britt Hager tripped him up, and it's in Texas territory around the 47. And number nine, Mark McBerry, fighting for the stop. 59 to 15, our score. 543 left to play in this ball game. 69,600 paid their way in here today, and there are not too many of those left in this stadium right now. This play is 2C, whatever 2C is. Pass is caught. The 40 to the 35. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds. It's Paul Smith. Garza finally shoved him out of bounds. I'm going to tell you how hard a play that is to catch. When a ball is low like this, this is a very difficult pass for a receiver to catch. Low like that, below his body. Now it almost looks as if he's running to get out of bounds again to stop the clock. Look here. Just get out of bounds and I'll stop the clock. yards of the play as Dwayne Duncan injured and has just been helped off the field. Try to get a report on him. Nick is back in the pocket. Incomplete as it bounces on the turf. Nope, they're going to say he up incomplete. That's what I thought. Cooper, the intended receiver. over this one. I thought, I certainly thought it was incomplete also. One official came in and said no good. Now watch here. I think we can see the ball hits the ground. Yes, it's on the ground, clearly. Now he scoops it right up. Wendell Sheldon says complete. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be Ken Faulkner on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> I saw clearly one official come in and signal no good, Ron. That's what I read. Complete at the 15, inside the 10-yard line. Alexander with a first and goal for the Houston Cougars. Higgins, a freshman linebacker, comes in to make the tackle. They're going to spot it down at the, just outside the six. Dacus at the line. Draw play, Kimball Anders inside the five, down to the four. Jeff Higgins again on the stop, number 31 for the Longhorns. <laughs> it's party time. It's party time in Houston. 34, of course, would normally be a three back through the four hole, the old football what that is in Houston. It's probably 34. I want the ball. Throw it to me. I got this one. Red two flag. Okay. Vegas over the middle. Incomplete. Jet Brown 
down the intended receiver. That stops the clock with three minutes and 20 seconds to play in this ball game, which somehow seems like it might have started yesterday. <laughs> That time I watched Patrick Cooper. He was a little upset. He's down at the bottom of your screen. There's Duncan, by the way, leaving. Dwayne Duncan heading to the locker room, as is uh, Eric Metcalf. Anders hit by Jaquist, still on his feet. Still on his feet and finally goes down as Higgins wraps him up back at the eight-yard line. Three minutes to play in this one. Fourth down and goal. our score. We still have 2.28 left to play in this one. That's Adams, the barefooted kicker who handles the kickoff chores for the Houston Cougars. Of course, Roman Anderson is the man who does extra points and field goals. Let's take a break. 2.22 left to play in the ball game, and we're going to be right back. Samuels to the near sideline, steps out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of close to nine of the play. I want to remind you, we'll be selecting our course player of the game at the conclusion, which is now very near, 2.16 left to play, so stay with us for that. Well, there's a lot of candidates. <laughs> yeah, but there's one who stands out. That yeah. we'll, we'll wait for this for a couple of seconds. We'll, but there's we'll hold back. One who stands out uh, extremely well in this one. Well, when I say a lot of candidates, of course, Andre Ware would have to be considered. You'd have to consider, of course, Phillips. Dixon has played well. Weatherspoon with 209 yards, uh, 220 yards on 12 carries. There's a lot of uh, people that have played very well for this Houston Cougar offense. So uh, with that in mind, we'll just hold off, right, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Keep everybody in suspense. 66-15, the score with 2.16 left to play. Houston now in total offense, 619 yards for Texas, 319. And Weatherspoon has 218 yards himself. Samuels puts a head down, and on the first down, uh, play comes out to the 36. making the stop on the play. Curtis 
Go Van, who is a walk-on wide receiver, down at the bottom of your screen. Deion Cockrell out to the 40-yard line as Thomas steps up to make the hit on him. It's going to be shy of the first down by just about a yard. So third down and just a couple of feet. Clock is about to go under one minute left to this one. And Ron, there's a young man who's had a real learning experience today, Mark Murdoch. I think he'll be in this position many more times here at Texas. They've got too fine a program to be in this position. He's learned a lot today. He's taken a lot of pressure. He's taken a lot of hits. He's just learned an awful lot. Taco breaks it up the middle after the 45-yard line. Well, we are pleased to announce that today's course player of the game, Jason Phillips of the University of Houston. Of course, he broke two records here today. 177 receptions. That is a record of 12 touchdown catches in a season. It has been some kind of day. Jason Phillips, our Coors player of the game. And he still has three more games to go. At least. Wyoming Tech and Rice. Samuel slips down at the 48-yard line. See the clock running down as this afternoon the Houston Cougars have put more points on the board than anybody has ever scored at a Texas team in the history of Memorial Stadium. I think it's more points than I've ever seen either, Ron. I just I haven't done many football games with 66 points, and I also haven't played in many football games that took four hours to complete. Murdoch over the middle, Samuels. He will be stopped as the clock winds down, and this one will go into the record books as the second worst loss ever by the University of Texas team. So let's take a break. Final score, 66-15. The Houston Cougars will be right back.